On a 70 degree Saturday night in Thibodeau, Louisiana, we've got Nichols baseball back on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Bryant Johnson at Ben Meyer Diamond at Didier Field for Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Nichols State University. The Colonels came back from a 3-0 seven inning deficit to win 5-3 on Friday night. Nichols is now tied for fourth in the Southland Conference. They're off to a 4-3 start in SLC play. Remember, it was a 2-4 start to the 2018 season for Nichols, and they still found a way to secure the seventh seed. They made it to the conference tournament in Sugarland, Texas, won a couple games, and were really two outs away from making it to the championship game and maybe having a spot in the NCAA regional awaiting them. That's the goal this season. It's the goal every year in the Southland Conference, and it's why we have two of the top teams in the country in the Southland Conference this season. Texas A&M Corpus Christi is one of those teams. They have a top 80 RPI. Sam Houston State still leading the pack. They're top 40 in the RPI department. Sam Houston State trying to fight off Stephen F. Austin for the top spot in the conference, something none of us expected to be saying at this stage in the season. SFA still leading the way in the SLC. Sam Houston State, they're sitting back in second. And so now we have Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and Nichols both knotted up at four and three in Southland Conference play. Scott Malone is in his 12th year managing Texas A&M Corpus Christi, and he has a carbon copy lineup from yesterday. No changes for A&M CC. Nichols will put another right-handed starter on the mound. It's senior Jake Padavian. He's had a great year. Five starts, a 2-1 record, a 3.06 ERA. We saw him in relief in the ninth inning against LSU on Wednesday. But a couple of close calls went the Tigers' way. And Jake was unable to pick up the second save of his Colonel career. Itchy Burtz is the leadoff man for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. He'll play second base. Enrique Sanchez Jr. is hitting second. He's at third base. Joey Werner, back-to-back -back starts at DH for the number three hitter. Nick Anderson is in center field. He's the cleanup man. Mike Williams will bat fifth and play left field. Luke Marbach is back at first base. He'll hit six. Thomas Jeffries the fourth. He's in right field batting seventh. Trevor Beard, he's the catcher hitting eighth. And Steven Rivera Shaheen, he's the number nine hitter. He'll be at shortstop. Same story for Nichols. No changes for the Colonels after that 5-3 win. Chris Sandberg is the catcher. Brady Bell is at third base. Ethan Valdez is the shortstop. Waylon LeBlanc, he made his 2019 debut yesterday, and he'll get back-to-back -back starts for the Colonels at second base. Adam Tarver is your first baseman. Austin France is in left field. Dane Simon is the center fielder. And Alec Paz is in right field for Nichols. Colonels are in their home whites. No red pinstripes tonight. White pants, white jerseys, red cap with Colonels in red across the front of the jerseys. We're underway from Thibodeau, and it's a first pitch ball from Jake Padavian. The Islanders are wearing their road blues tonight. Blue jerseys, gray pants with the blue and green stripes along the side of the pants. Itchy Burtz will take a strike on the corner and Jake Badavian has even the count at one and one. Andrew Chestnut is our home plate umpire. Tracy Cheek is at first base. Jeff Minton is at third base. One ball, one strike to the leadoff man. Badavian goes outside, he gets a foul tip and it's into the netting to make it one and two. Itchy Burtz had a pretty special Friday night for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. It was in a losing effort, but he was impossible to get out. He's got his batting average up to 352 on the season. One ball, two strikes, no outs to the leadoff man. And the pitch from Bedavian popped up third base side. It's heading towards the Colonel dugout. Brady Bell will give it a go, but it's eight feet behind the dugout foul ball. Strikeouts were impossible to come by for the Colonels last night. Trevor Kilcrease had 14 in his first home start of the year in conference play. Last night was his second home start in SLC play. He pitched well, was unable to get a strikeout, and it took Nichols until late in the game to get there first. A 1-2 to the left-handed hitting Burtz. It's outside for ball two. Both pitchers were able to reach into the sixth or seventh inning last night, but then it became situational bullpen pitching. We saw 
Five Islanders pitch, six for the Colonels. The 2-2 rolled over to first, diving his Tarver. He fields and tosses to first base, covering his Bedavian. One out on a great play by Adam Tarver. And any time you can retire Itchy Burtz, it is a cause for celebration. Single, walk, single, single, and his four plate appearances last night. He came up with two outs in the ninth inning pop up behind the home plate. It ended the game and that gave Nichols a two run win. It gave Colin Kramer the first win of his Colonel career. Jake Bedavian fires in a strike to Enrique Sanchez Jr. He's ahead of the number two hitter 0-1. Sanchez was in the on deck circle when Burtz popped up behind home plate to end the game. He picked up a hit in four plate appearances last night. The 0-1 is low and away for ball one. Sanchez has his average up to 373 on the year. No home runs, 20 RBIs. It was a singles story for Corpus last night. No extra base hits. The 1-1 pitch to Sanchez. He lines it up into left field, retreating and now approaching. Austin France has the second out of the inning. Two up, two down to start the game for Jake Bedavian. Wind is blowing in from center field at 11 miles per hour. That Gulf Coast boost, it's always been a benefactor for these Bayou Bandits. Nichols certainly knows how to play to this park and it is frustrating for teams like Texas A&M Corpus Christi that come in with a 329 batting average. They want so many deep fly balls end up at the warning track. With two away and the base is empty, the first pitch to Joey Warner. It's two hopped up the first baseline, but it slices foul, and Werner will get to stand back in with an 0-1 count. We talk so much about the impact of Aaron Hernandez with Texas A&M Corpus Christi and how hard it is to lose a third round pick, but lost in the shuffle of Hernandez's departure from the team was the loss of Harrison DiNicola. The 0-1 pitch to Warner, another foul ball at the first baseline, it's 0-2. DiNicola was a 5'11", 210-pound first baseman for this Texas A&M Corpus Christi team. He was a 27th round selection by the Miami Marlins last year. But the Islanders are starting to find a way to find some solid footing at first base, and Warner has been a big part of the arrival of this offense. The 0-2, soft tapper up to the mound, snagged on one hop, and Bedavian soft tosses it to first to finish up a 1-2-3 inning. Jake Bedavian gets a ground out to first from Itchy Burtz, a fly ball to left field off the bat of Enrique Sanchez Jr. Joey Werner, a comebacker that Bedavian takes care of, and that's how the 1-2-3 first inning will finish for the Colonel Saturday night starter. We'll see if Nichols can get their offense going in the bottom of the first. It took them seven plus innings to score their first run yesterday, and they ended up picking a five to three win against Texas A&M CC. Bottom of the first is after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Nichols is 12 and 11 on the year. They're four and three in Southland Conference play. Corpus Christi now 15 and 10 after yesterday's loss. They're also four and three in SLC play. No score, bottom of the first from Didier Field. Ethan Valdez, Dane Simon, and Dylan Bell, they're the first three hitters that Leo Perez will square up against. 
Perez has a talented group of defenders playing behind him. He's got Trevor Beard as his catcher. Luke Marbach is at first base. Itchy Burtz is the second baseman. Enrique Sanchez Jr. is at third base. Steven Rivera Shaheen is at shortstop. And it's Mike Williams in left field, Nick Anderson in center field, Thomas Jeffries the fourth in right field. Get a little salsa in your soul from Ethan Valdez. Four years of Ethan Valdez starting at second base or shortstop. He'll open, swinging at the first pitch. He lines it up the middle, backhanded deep by Rivera Shaheen. No chance on the throw to first base. And an infield single starts the game for Ethan Valdez. Wednesday's loss against LSU, first pitch fastballs. It was the story of the Colonel's success, even though they ended up losing in 10 innings. There was such aggression early in the game by Adam Tarver, by Dylan Bell, and Ethan Valdez will open with a first pitch single against Leo Perez. He's on first for Dane Simon. Valdez takes off, Simon rockets one down the right field line for a base hit. Valdez will cruise across second, he'll reach third. Simon's got to get back to first base and he beats the throw from Jeffries. A confident turn by Dane Simon, he's lucky to get back in time. A couple pitches and a couple hits to start the game for Nichols. They've got runners on the corners and no outs for Dylan Bell. Leo Perez has had an excellent season for this Islander program. He's a sophomore. He was used as a, a bit bullpen right-handed reliever last year. He's made five starts in 2019. He's got a 3.16 ERA, but he's coming off of a career-high 103-pitch performance in his last start against Dylan Bell. Simon is on the move, and Bell swings at the first pitch. He lines it into left. It's an RBI single by Bell. The ball is bobbled and left by Williams, and Simon advances to third. Three pitches, three hits, one nothing Nichols. Dylan Bell, that big left-handed bat. This has been the best week of the season for him. That mishap in left field gave Simon just enough time to move up from second to third base. The Colonels are looking to tack on a couple more runs with Alec Paz at the plate. He's batting cleanup today. Simon's at third, Bell is at first. It's one nothing Nichols. And Perez, quick throw over first base. Bell is back in time. And Paz will regroup at home plate. Right-handed hitting right fielder is in his first year with Nichols. He was hitting cleanup during fall ball, and here he is batting cleanup midway through the 2019 season. Perez sends in a curve, and it's tapped foul at the third baseline. It's a three-pitch mix for Perez. But as we have found out early in this game, he will live around the plate Colonels have confidence that they can swing away and cause some problems. The 0 1 fastball is low and away. It's ball one. And for a Nichols team that took their time scoring in last night's game, what a start to game two of this three game series. Perez is 6 1, 2 10. Big presence on the mound. And another flip over to first. Bell dives back, and Alec Paz patiently awaits this next pitch. Perez's fastball will hit 88 to 92. His slider is at 77 to 80, and he's got a changeup in the upper 70s. His 1-1 pitch to Paz. It dips down and in for ball two. Lefties are hitting 274 off of him. Righties are batting 278. Colonels had a couple hits through the first five-plus innings in yesterday's win. They've got three through their first three hitters today. The 2-1 pitch, not foul behind home plate, and it's parking lot bound. 2-2 two -two count to the Colonel cleanup man. Pauses third on the team in RBIs. Leads the team in strikeouts. But he's done a nice job battling back and putting himself in this position to be the cleanup man in conference play. 
The 2-2, it's down and away. Ball three, and the count is full. Jake Bedavian spoiled us in the top of the first inning. A 1-2-3 start to the game with one ball that left the infield. Perez came into today's game with just 10 hits allowed in 10 innings in conference play. His 3-2 pitch, fly ball into shallow center field. Drifting back is Anderson. He'll give way to Jeffries in right center. It's caught. Simon can tag. The ball is cut off at second base, and Simon scores standing up. A sack fly by Alec Paz to make it 2 to nothing. Nichols. The back-to-basic baseball that Seth Thibodeau has thrived with in his nine years as manager with the Colonels. Get runners aboard. Station to station baseball. First, second, third. Bring them home. A couple quick runs and an RBI for Paz. With one out and a runner on first, Adam Tarver stands in and he'll check his swing and take a slider on the corner for strike one. This has been Adam Tarver and Dylan Bell's best week of the season. Bell had that clutch double down the right field line in the eighth inning yesterday. Tarver's got his average up to 250 this week. The 0-1 pitch, Tarver reaches and taps it foul towards the Colonel dugout. Absolutely remarkable that Adam Tarver is even playing right now. He had rotator cuff surgery a little over a year ago, and it's normally a 14 to 18 month recovery period. He still can't pitch, but we have found out this week he can hit. The 0-2, it's up and in for ball one. The problem with being a player is that sometimes you're not allowed to enjoy your best body of work. If, if the team loses and you hit a couple home runs and maybe you do it against the number seven team in the country, like Adam Tarver did on Wednesday, on to the next one. The one, two, it's looped foul down the right field line. Trotting after it is Jeffries. He doesn't have enough room, and it's into the Cajun Cooking Club and bouncing towards the bounce house. The beauty of broadcasting is that we can talk about those two home runs at LSU as long as we want, Adam Tarver. And it's put Tarver in a position to anchor the middle of this batting order. 2 nothing Nichols and a 1-2 pitch to Tarver that's just off the corner of the plate for ball two. Tarver entered this week with a batting average just above 200. Then he went two for three against LSU. He went two for three yesterday. He scored three runs in those last two games. It had been almost a month since he had last scored a run. Pickoff attempt over to first base, diving back in time is Bell. And Leo Perez will stand back atop that mound and prepare for this 2-2 pitch. Already three hits and two runs in the bottom of the first inning for Nichols. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Perez from the stretch, he pitches and gets a pop fly into shallow left center field. Rivera Shaheen, he'll give away it short, and it's Anderson in from center field, squeezing the ball for out number two. Paz flies out to right field, but he was able to bring home a run. Tarver flies out to center field, and there's two outs for Austin France. Number five is back to the number six spot in the order. He was tormenting Colonel outfielders during batting practice. It's a pretty competitive pregame batting cage contest for the Colonel hitters and Colonel outfielders. And France will ease up and take a curve on the corner for strike one. We had some outfielders robbing Dylan Bell and Brady Bell during the final few rounds of BP, but Austin France was slicing everything into the gaps. The 0 1 pitch. Reaching down is France. He rolls it up the middle. It's scooped by Rivera Shaheen, and he'll tap his left foot on the bag to end the inning. An unassisted ground out to the Islanders shortstop. That'll finish up a fun first for the Colonels. They get two runs on three hits. They strand one member of the Dirty Red. 
No errors for Corpus Christi, but they'll head to the top of the second, trailing two to nothing. Colonels, a great start, and Jake Badavian looking to build off of a 1-2-3 start to the game. He went 1-2-3 against three of the hottest hitters in the Southland Conference. This is Colonel Baseball on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Jake Badavian has been spotted two early runs in this game, and he'll take a 2-0 advantage into the top of the second. Corpus Christi will send Nick Anderson, Mike Williams, and Luke Marbach to the plate. Nick Anderson remains one of the most underrated players in the Southland Conference. Four-year starter for Corpus. Badavian opens the inning with a fastball. Anderson lines it to right center. Simon steps to his left. He's in the gap, and he's got the catch. One away on one pitch. difference in the first inning plus. Nichols has had success swinging and producing hits on the first pitch. That's two of the four hitters that Bedavian has faced that have swung at his first pitch, but they've both led to outs. Bases are empty for Mike Williams. Left-handed hitting left fielder is hitting 348. Couple home runs, 14 RBIs. Bedavian a big kick and a pitch and a fastball that lives on the corner for strike one. Davian will really sell that karate kick when he pushes off and uses his left leg to propel his fastball forward. What a senior season so far for Jake Bedavian. The 0-1 pitch, it's down and in for ball one. If you knew that Bedavian was your senior starter that would fit on either Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays heading into the season, but he has been a perfect bridge between a couple first-year players. 1-1 one, one pitch, it tails away, it works as a strike, and it's a swing and a miss for Mike Williams. Fedavian is such a calming presence for a Trevor Kilcrease who gets to open each series as your Friday night starter, and then Shane Mejia on Sundays. The 1-2 fastball, it tails down and away, it just misses the corner, ball two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Bases are empty in the top of the second. Colonels are working with a two to nothing lead. The two two to Williams, breaking ball, ripped into right, base hit. And the Islanders have their first base runner of the evening. Williams hit fifth yesterday and he brought home the second run of the game for Corpus in the sixth inning. One for four game for Williams, and it was an evening with a lot of base hits early, but the Islanders could not run on Chris Sandberg. Sandberg came into yesterday's game four for 23 at throwing out base runners. Obviously, that, that's not indicative of his ability, but he was two for two last night. Badavian's fastball is left low and away to Luke Marbach. First baseman for Corpus is ahead 1-0. and oh. You can see that the timing and relationship between catcher and pitching staff is starting to evolve. And so much of Sandberg's ability to throw out base dealers, it's based on a starting staff that gives him a consistent pitch to work with, inning in and inning out. Davian's 1-0 pitch to Marbach. It's a changeup. It's right at the knees. Strike one. <laughs> Trevor
Trevor Kilcrease was able to go five innings last night. Davian has had a pretty special season from all facets of the game, but his ability to eat innings has been huge. A 1 1 pitch, soft tap to second. LeBlanc fields, tosses to the bag, and Valdez is unable to turn the double play. It works as a 4 6 fielder's choice. But Luke Marbach, speed demon up the first base line, and he beats the throw. The inning remains intact for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. And with two outs, Thomas Jeffries will get to hit. Jake Bedavian arrived in the 2018 season after a quick pit stop at Alvin Community College. He started his career at Incarnate Word, but they were going through the end of a long stretch of losses. It's a program that is now revitalized in San Antonio. But there wasn't a lot that Bedavian could do in 2016. A lot of losses for Incarnate Word in those 2016 and 2017 seasons. Bedavian, two outs and a 2 nothing lead. Sends in a fastball, and it's popped foul behind the Colonel dugout. In four of Jake's five starts this season, he's pitched at least six innings. He went seven innings in his last start in Conway against Central Arkansas. Three quality starts on the year. And now an 0-1 pitch that comes inside for ball one. His two Southland Conference starts, they've been excellent. Six innings, four hits, two runs against UNO. Seven innings, seven hits, two earned runs against Central Arkansas. And his strikeout total is starting to tick up as well. He had six at UCA. Marbach on first base, a 1-1 pitch, a foul tip, and a swing and a miss. Two quick strikes to Thomas Jeffries. Jeffries is hitting 300 in his final season with Corpus. No home runs, 11 RBIs. He hit seventh yesterday, an 0 for 4 ninth against Trevor Kilcrease and a couple of relievers. 1-2 fastball, zips outside, it's ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in the second, and a 2 to nothing Nichols lead. Six Colonel pitchers in yesterday's game were used. Five for the Islanders. 2 p.m. game awaits us tomorrow. We'll see how Scott Malone and Seth Thibodeau use their pens tonight. The 2-2 pitch, it's a high chop back to short. Valdez fields and puts his foot on the bag to end the inning. Marbach was taking off on contact, but Ethan Valdez does a great job fielding his position, and Jake Bedavian has put a couple zeros on the board through the first two frames. No runs, one hit, one left aboard, no errors, and a 2 to nothing Colonel lead after the first inning and a half of play. Leo Perez is back on the mound for the bottom of the second, and he will see Brady Bell, Chris Sandberg, and Waylon LeBlanc for the Colonels. It's the 7, 8, 9 hitters for Nichols after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Brady Bell will get things started in the bottom of the second inning. Two nothing, Nichols is on top. Bell had a couple big hits to end yesterday's game. And against Leo Perez, he'll take a first pitch fastball. It's on the corner for strike one. 
Brady Bell has his average up to 341 on the season. He's got a home run and 15 RBIs. The 0-1 pitch to him. It's inside and off the glove of Beard, 1-1. One one. Bell picked up two RBIs in last night's win over Corpus. The 1-1 one one fastball. It's left outside. Ball two. A symbolic opponent for Brady Bell. His entire career, his season for Nichols in 2018, it changed with a trip to Corpus Christi. 2-1 fastball, it sent foul behind home plate, 2-2. Two two. Brady Bell was not the starting third baseman through the first three weeks of the 2018 season. Nichols had a non-conference trip to Corpus to play UC Santa Barbara. They also played the Islanders in a non-con game. 2-2 to Bell. He hammers it over to short. Deep in the hole. It's fielded by Rivera Shaheen. And a great throw over to first. Takes care of Bell. Difficult play. Rivera Shaheen makes it. One out. Corpus handed Nichols a pretty lopsided loss. And what was a, a special trip in a, a tournament that was played at Corpus Christi Hook Stadium. Colonels had to Get through some growing pains early last season. But Brady Bell became their starting third baseman during that trip to Corpus. He hasn't looked back. And to be able to bring back a couple veterans at third base and shortstop, it's helped the Colonels cause this season. With one out and the base is empty, a nice sliders across for strike one against Chris Sandberg. The Colonels started the game with three straight hits. They lead it two to nothing. Perez, his 0-1 slider, same result, strike two. Sandberg reached down to try and connect. He falls empty, and now it's an 0-2 count to the 327 hitter. One home run, 10 RBIs, the junior Chris Sandberg. The 0-2 fastball, high hop over to short. On the second big bounce, Rivera Shaheen comes up with the ball. He pumps and throws to first, and he takes care of the second out. Back-to-back -back ground outs to the left side of the infield. Rivera Shaheen taking care of both Bell and Sandberg. Two outs for Waylon LeBlanc, and he is now a mainstay in this starting lineup for the Colonels. Nichols used three second basemen yesterday. It started with LeBlanc. He'll take a slider that's at the knees for strike one. Waylon had a hit and two at-bats and made a series of great plays and a wonderful day at second base. The 0-1 from Perez, it's outside for ball one. Ivan Prejean finished the game at second base. Will Etheridge also came in to play a little second base. The 1-1 to LeBlanc, he fouls it into the netting, one and two. Perez needed 17 pitches to make it through the first inning. All things considered, not a lot of pitches, but it sums up the success that Nichols had swinging at those first pitches and producing hits. The one-two slider, a protective swing and a foul ball that sails over the fencing down the first baseline. Sunset scheduled for 7.15 tonight. And we can see those jackets start to make an appearance behind home plate down the first base and third base side. 1-2 to LeBlanc, check swing, ball two. The barehanded approach by Waylon LeBlanc. And he is up there to fight through these at-bats, make contact, get on base, and use his speed. Leadoff man Ethan Valdez is on deck. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a 2-0 Nichols lead. Bases are empty for LeBlanc, and he will call time and step out of the batter's box. Leo Perez, he winds, kicks, and pitches. Slider that's tapped back to the mound. Tough play for Perez. He bare hands, throws, and gets the out. Calm and composed play by the sophomore righty. And Leo Perez has a 1-2-3 second inning. Three ground balls. Two were to the shortstop, Rivera Shaheen. And the third is handled by tonight's Islander starting pitcher. After a frustrating first inning, Perez has found his groove. And he's actually been able to retire six straight colonels since the three singles that opened the game all in a row. 
No runs, no hits, nobody left aboard, no errors. Corpus trails two to nothing after two innings on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Trevor Beard, Stephen Rivera Shaheen, and Itchy Burns will bat for AM Corpus Christi in the third. Nichols has a two to nothing lead. Jake Bedavian ready to deal with the number eight hitter for Corpus. And Beard will take a first pitch slider for strike one. Trevor Beard is starting to find his comfort zone as the starting catcher for AM Corpus Christi. It's a role that he has had to embrace in the last two weeks. The 0 1 from Bedavian, ground ball towards short on the third short hop. It's secured and thrown from Valdez to first for the first out of the inning. Ethan Valdez playing back and taking his time on that throw to first base. A ground up to start the third inning. There's one out for Steven Rivera Shaheen. Drake Osborne had been the starting catcher for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. He's been battling some injuries since the Abilene Christian series last weekend. Bear Shaheen, who wants a slider across the corner for strike one, 0 and 1. Rivera Shaheen is prepared for this 10 degree drop we're about to get after the sun sets. He's got his long sleeve blue shirt underneath the jersey, and he'll swing and foul off the 0 1 pitch. It's 0 and 2. The, the contrast of the Southland Conference, it's wonderful. You get a lot of Midwesterners that end up playing in the SLC, and it doesn't matter if it's 45, 50 degrees to start the season. They're in short sleeve shirts. They're loving it. Rivera Shaheen grew up in the Caribbean. And the 0-2 pitch is left low and away for ball one. Steven grew up just outside of San Juan, Puerto Rico. He's got his family in attendance this weekend, enjoying a little baseball down the bayou. And the number nine man for Corpus Chop a 1-2 pitch off of his heel, foul ball. Steven had one hit and four at-bats yesterday. He's batting 288 in his second season with Corpus. No home runs, 15 RBIs, but he is surrounded by seniors and juniors in this starting nine. He is the only sophomore that is a feature part of this roster and especially this infield. He has earned this opportunity to be a part of a playoff team. The Davians 1-2 fastball. It's down and in for ball two. Count evens up with one out in the third inning, and Nichols enjoying a 2 to nothing lead. The 2-2 from Bedavian. Foul ball, first base side. Keep the count at 2-2. Two and two. Davian has only needed 26 pitches through the first two plus innings. Leadoff man Itchy Burtz is on deck. And Bedavian ready for another 2 2 offering. Against the left handed hitting shortstop, he sends in the slider and it's softly looped down the left field line, but it slices foul. Count remains 2 and 2. And Parker White resumes his role as the colonel that has been tasked with fetching foul balls. And he runs down the left field line, picks it up, heads back to the dugout, play on. The 2-2, two -two, it's grounded on two hops to second, an easy backhand and a toss to first, courtesy of Waylon LeBlanc. Two outs in the third inning. This is the Jake Bedavian 
that broke through that brick wall at the end of the 2018 season when Nichols needed a complete game shutout against UCA to secure a spot in the conference tournament. He has not looked back. Two outs, bases empty. Nichols leads it two to nothing. Hits you Burtz. He shows bunt, but takes the first pitch down and in for ball one. We were joking about Itchy Burtz yesterday, and he just has a lot of Ichiro moments with how he protects the zone and makes sure that he decides what's a strike and what's a ball. He'll just keep fouling off pitches. He'll show bunt on the 1-0, bring the bat back, but it's too late, strike one. How do you think he earned the name Itchy? In high school, and probably for his whole life, this has been his style. This has been his approach. A couple teammates were joking with him. Who do you think you are, Ichiro? 1-1. One, one. It's clubbed foul at the first baseline. And the count now sits at 1-2 and two with two outs, and the base is empty in the third. And the name Ichi has stuck with him since, and it is befitting of him, and I'm sure Ichiro would be proud that there's a player in the Southland Conference for Corpus Christi that has been able to emulate his style so successfully. The one, two, a soft roller back to the mound. Bedavian drops to his knees. He fields his position, and he tosses it to first. A one, two, three, third inning by Jake Bedavian. The ball never left the infield. A ground out to short, another grounder to second, and a comebacker that's handled with ease by Jake Bedavian. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left aboard. Colonels will keep this 2-0 lead intact, and they'll get the top of the order to the plate in the bottom of the third on ESPN Radio New Orleans. We'll see Ethan Valdez, Dane Simon, and Dylan Bell back for the Colonels in the bottom of the third. 2-0 Nichols on a spectacular Saturday night at Didier Field. Valdez opened the game with a single. He scored the first run. He'll show bunt and take a slider on the corner for strike one. We forget how elite of, the, uh, of athletic performances so many of these players are. You could put almost every single player on this field on a basketball court, on a football field, they could all play. Valdez used to play football. He'll try to show his speed as he grounds it over to short, but Rivera Shaheen handles it in time. He makes the throw to first, and on two pitches, Ethan Valdez is retired. One out, Dane Simon stands in. He singled in the first inning. Dane Simon has looked like a free safety this weekend. He's covered a lot of ground in center field, made a couple big plays, had a real ambitious stolen base yesterday that sparked the Colonels at a pivotal point in their comeback win against the Islanders. One out, base is empty. The pitch to Simon, it's down and away for ball one. The only notable change from yesterday, Austin France and Dane Simon, they've flipped spots in the order. France is hitting six today. Simon now in the two hole. A 1 0 pitch to Dane Simon. It lives on the corner for strike one. Dane reached in his first three plate appearances yesterday. He was hit in the helmet by a curve in the second inning, a couple singles in the fifth and the seventh. A 1 1 fastball. It's inside for ball two and a 2 1 count for Dane Simon. 
Seventh inning is what sparked the Colonel comeback. They scored three runs. The 2-1 to Simon. He shows bunt. He hops it over to third, charging, collecting, and throwing for the out is Sanchez. He took a big charge on that ball and let it just softly land in the leather. Nice job throwing on the run and a couple quick outs to start the third inning. Leo Perez has found his comfort zone. Three straight hits to start the game. Nobody has reached since Dylan Bell single back in the first. Bell watches a curve pass down and away for ball one. Two outs and a 2 nothing lead in the third for Nichols. A 1-0 count to Dylan Bell. Eight straight Colonels have been dismissed by Leo Perez. 1-0 pitch, big swing, a softly tapped foul ball. It evens the count at 1-1 one and one for Dylan Bell. Leo Perez was a pretty talented two-way player back in Mission, Texas. He went to Palm View High School. He was ranked as the 14th best right-handed pitcher in the state of Texas. He hit 489 with 11 home runs. Went 9-3 and three as a pitcher with a lot of strikeouts. Had 123 strikeouts. He's been able to tick that total upwards in his sophomore season. He's averaging just under a strikeout per inning of, of play. Still looking for his first strikeout against the Colonels tonight. One ball, one strike, two outs, two nothing Nichols lead. And Leo Perez putting a slider down and in for ball two. Corpus had a pretty big shift onto right center field and the right side of the infield with Bell yesterday. Not the case today. And he'll pop one up on a 2 1 pitch. It'll stay in the infield. Sanchez clears out at third base and in foul territory he makes the catch in front of the bag it's a one two three third inning and that's nine straight colonels that have been retired by leo perez second straight three up three down inning for perez he still trails but he's been able to find his groove in the last couple innings no hits no runs nobody left aboard no errors two nothing nickels after three innings of play on espn radio new orleans Two nothing Nichols. We're in the top of the fourth inning at Ben Meyer Diamond. Texas A&M Corpus Christi will send their two, three, four hitters to the plate in the fourth. Enrique Sanchez Jr. He'll get first dibs on Jake Bedavian. Only one hit has been allowed by Bedavian through the first three innings. The Islanders' right-handed hitting third baseman will take a fastball and it's on the corner for strike one. Sanchez is 5'9", 210 pounds. Grew up in Houston and he should have been a Division I ball player from the second he graduated high school. He had to go to Wharton Community College first. The 0 1 fastball, hard hit up the middle, diving, backhanding, and fielding is LeBlanc, but no play is to be made at first base. Sanchez beats the throw, and it's a leadoff single for the Islander third baseman. All he does is pick up base hits. Sanchez is hitting. 375 in his second season with the Islanders. He was an all-conference honorable mention selection last year when he hit 367. Two years of D1 ball, and he's batting 370. Sanchez is on for Joey Werner. Only the 15th game of the year for Werner. The 
that Scott Malone is loving what he is bringing to the table at DH. The lefty will swing at the first pitch. He taps it to short. Tough play for Valdez. He ignores Sanchez at second, throws on the run, and gets the out at first. Sanchez is in scoring position, but Werner is out on one pitch. to Corpus until the seventh inning in yesterday's loss to get their first base runner to third base. Once they were able to get a couple guys in scoring position, they took advantage of it. They scored the first three runs of the game before Nichols scored the final five. Fourth inning, a 2 nothing Nichols lead tonight, and Sanchez becomes the first Islander to find himself in scoring position. Nick Anderson. He allows a slider to sail across for strike one. Jake Badavian doing what Jake Badavian does well, and that is first pitch strikes. That's why he's kept this ERA under three in his senior season. No balls, one strike, one out, a runner on second, and a 2 nothing Nichols lead in the fourth. The pitch from Badavian, fastball lofted down the right field line. It's sailing foul. And it ends up in the bullpen area next to the Corpus pitchers, 0-2. Scott Malone was saying before today's game that when you look at the Colonel's pitching stats and you see the number 29 team in the country in ERA, it would be easy to think that those numbers are the result of some games against Grambling or Alcorn State, Southern Illinois, maybe, maybe some opponents that didn't come to Thibodeau and, and find a way to compete with the Colonels. But Scott Malone made it clear that that's not the case, at least in his 12 years of managing in the Southland Conference. What he has seen on tape with the Colonels is that this team can flat out pitch. So far, so good against the hottest hitting team in the Southland Conference. Islanders struggling to come up with some runs. The 0-2 from Bedavian, fly ball, right side of the outfield. It's heading towards the bullpen, and it's out of play again. Coach Malone said he, he woke up this morning at the Hampton Inn in Thibodeau, and even though he had just watched the LSU-Nichols game two times prior to today, he watched it live after their Wednesday night game against Houston Victoria, and then he watched it on the bus on the ride into town. He said he wanted to just check in on a couple more things and he watched the game again this morning. Bullpen, starters, everybody throws strikes, they compete around the corners, no self-inflicted wounds. And as we say that, wild pitch for Bedavian and it leads to an advancement of Enrique Sanchez. He moves from second to third and a rare wild pitch from Jake Bedavian. One ball, two strikes, one out, a 2 nothing Nichols lead in the fourth. Nick Anderson, this is why he hits cleanup. Second on the Islanders in RBIs. Third in batting average. He's a 340 hitter. He's got one home run and 17 RBIs. He lined out the center in the second inning. And he's going to line one to center on a 1-2 pitch. Simon steps back. He comes up with the catch. Tagging is Sanchez. The throw home from Simon. It's a little late. And a head first slide by Sanchez gives the Islanders their first run of the game. Colonels still lead it, but it's a two to one ball game. Anderson picks up the RBI. 18 RBIs for Anderson. Sanchez scores his 20th run of the year. A costly wild pitch. And now the bases are empty with two outs. And Mike Williams back to the plate. Williams swings and misses at a fastball, 0-1. Jake Bedavian back to the fastball, back on the corner for strike two. Letting out some frustration after that wild pitch. Bedavian has been on point in the follow-up pitches. No balls, two strikes, two outs, base is empty. Colonels lead it 2-1. to one. Wind in the kick, and a pitch that's rolled foul at the third baseline. Count stays 0-2. Every player is different, every pitcher is different, but this staff philosophy for the Colonels, it's kept them competitive and it's kept them in games. A lot of strike throwers, and they do have a defense that can make some plays. 
the 0-2 by Bedavian. It's left down and away for ball one. It just misses the corner. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Bedavian is ready to go. He's already got the ball back from Sandberg. Puts the glove up, grabs the ball, the wind in the pitch, and it's in the turf for ball two. Crazy thing about Nichols in this 2019 season, and, and we're right at that midway point for overall games played and regular season play, they are last in the Southland Conference in double plays turned, which is unheard of in Thibodeau. The 2-2 back on the corner for a called third strike. Jake Bedavian, four innings, two hits, one run allowed. And the Cardinals will keep this lead intact as their bats are back for the bottom of the fourth. The Islanders come up with a run on one hit. They strand a runner, no errors on Nichols. It's 2-1 to one Cardinals after three and a half innings on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Another picture-perfect postcard night at Ben Meyer Diamond at Didier Field. The Colonels have a two-to-one lead. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. We started at 70 degrees. We're down to 66 with the sun setting over the right field line. The fourth inning opens with a slider that's grounded towards second. Alec Paz, a quick ground-out victim. Burt's over to Marbach. One pitch, one out. And this has been the story for Leo Perez since a frustrating first inning. Ten straight Colonels have been retired by Perez. And after those three straight singles to start the game, it was hard to picture Perez getting into this kind of groove, but he has settled down, and now there's one out for Adam Tarver. Tarver is four for his last seven, and he'll swing in a slider. A two-hop to third, fielded by Sanchez from just behind the bag. He throws across the diamond for the second out. Leo Perez, two pitches, two outs. A 4-3 and a 5-3. Austin France, he's the number six hitter for the Colonels. He plays left field. An unassisted ground out to shortstop. That was the result of his first A-B in the opening inning. Nichols had a runner on first and two outs, but France grounded to Rivera Shaheen. He stepped on the bag at second. And that was the last time the Colonels had a base runner on. France will take a fastball, and it's across the corner for strike one. Austin France, a 290 hitter as a sophomore. A couple home runs, 20 RBIs. He and Alec Paz have been at the four, five, or six spot in this order since fall ball. That shows you how well regarded they are with this Colonel coaching staff. JC transfers holding down the middle of the order from day one. The 0 1 fastball, it's down and away for ball one. Austin Francis become real tight with Ethan Valdez since he arrived in Thibodeau. Always a good sign when the underclassmen befriend the vets. 1 1 slider, it's outside for ball two. And is there a better player to learn from than Ethan Valdez, a four-year starter and a cornerstone of Colonel Infield? Sometimes the infielders stick together, and same with the outfielders, but we've got a left fielder and a shortstop that have become real tight. 2-1 pitch, it's sawed off, fouled into the netting, 2-2. Two two. Perez has two balls, two strikes, and two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Corpus just scored their first run of the game. It's 2-1 to one Nichols. Already four pitches in this at bat. We've only seen two between the first two hitters to start the fourth. 
2-2 slider. It's down and in for ball three. Perez went over the 100 pitch plateau for the first time in his college career in his last start against ACU. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Payoff pitch. It's grounded towards short. Steven Rivera Shaheen, he waits on it at short, throws to first and gets the out. It's a one, two, three, fourth inning. Leo Perez, 12 straight Colonels have been dismissed by this right-handed sophomore. And he is keeping Corpus in the hunt. They still trail, but they've got a chance to tie or take the lead in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left aboard in the bottom of the fourth. It's Nichols two, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi one. You're listening to Colonel Baseball on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Hanging out at the did for the top of the fifth inning. Game two of our three-game series between Corpus Christi and Nichols. The Colonels have a two-to-one lead. Luke Marbach, Thomas Jeffries, and Trevor Beard will bat in the top of the fifth for Corpus. And Jake Bedavian turned to an off-speed pitch. He leaves it outside to the Corpus first baseman, 1-0. Marbach grounded out to second base in the second inning. He's batting 364, a couple home runs, 15 RBIs. Everybody is batting at least 288 in this order for Corpus. But they've been held to four runs through their first 13 innings in this three-game series. The 1-0, Marbach takes it on the corner for strike one. In Wednesday's 5-4 extra inning loss against LSU, Nichols was real selective with their left-handed relievers. Paul Maneri had four straight left-handed bats that held down the heart of that Tiger order. It made things really interesting late in the game. 1-1 one, one slider. It's down and away from Bedavian. 2-1. and one. It doesn't matter if this is a midweek game against Houston Victoria or a big series in Southland Conference play. Scott Malone will never take that approach. Two balls, one strike, no outs. And Bedavian gets a ground ball up the middle. Deep backhand by Waylon LeBlanc. His throw is a little late, never stood a chance to catch Marbach, and it's an infield single to start the fifth inning. Fourth inning open with an infield single from Enrique Sanchez Jr., and he came around to score the first run of the game. Corpus, they gave the Colonels a two-run cushion in the first. Islanders scored their first run in the fourth. Dirty Red still up by a run, but the leadoff man is on for Thomas Jeffries. This is how a Scott Malone lineup is built. Lefty righty, lefty righty, lefty righty, lefty righty. Brady Bell is going to creep in from third base. Valdez and LeBlanc, a slight shift to the right side of the infield. And Bedavian, a quick pick over to first. Marbach is back in time. Everyone can run on this roster for Corpus Christi. Arbach, certainly a threat. Corpus looks to bunt, but Jeffries pushes it foul. Scott Malone was an incredible player when he was at TCU. All-American nominee in 91 and 92. Rangers picked him in the ninth round of the 92 draft. He was one of the most visible players in the Southwest Conference. He was back-to-back -back player of the year in the Southwest Conference. 
took part in the 92 Olympic trials. His 12th year as manager with Corpus Christi. And Bedavian will try another pickoff move over to first base. Marbach slides back in time. Scott Malone said his philosophy with right-handed and left-handed hitters is based on his playing career. The 0-1 from Bedavian. Check swing for ball one. It's outside. Malone was a lefty, and he said he hated getting surrounded by other lefties because opposing managers will do what Nichols did on Wednesday night. If you've got four lefties in a row, great. We will empty out our entire bullpen just so they only see lefties. Fifth inning, two to one lead for Nichols. Leadoff man is on, and now it's a 1 1 count to Thomas Jeffries. Fastball is roped towards right, charging his pause. He lets it land for a base hit, and that's a couple hits to start the inning for Corpus. They've got runners on first and second. There are no outs for Trevor Beard. Beard grounded out to shortstop in the third inning. Big opportunity for the new starting catcher for Corpus. Beard still had plenty of at-bats under his belt when he had to step in for Drake Osborne. But this weekend marks just his 10th and 11th start of the season. He was used more as a Sunday starter, midweek option. But because he wears a Texas A&M Corpus Christi jersey, he is a 300-plus hitter. If you are an Islander this season, you're hitting 300. And Beard is batting 340 with a home run and eight RBIs. Tie and run is at second. Go ahead, run at first. Bedavian will work out of the stretch. He sets and pitches. Beard shows butt, but he fouls it off of his leg, 0-1. Cloud cover building from left field to center field. Right field, another gorgeous sunset emerging behind Didier Field and starting to cut across the Gulf Coast. When you have that pink spotlight, right center and right field, 70 degree sunny Saturday afternoon in late March. And now we get to turn on those big lights in left center and right center. This is what Southland Conference baseball has always been about. The 0-1 from Bedavian, fastballs outside for ball one. And the Colonel Corner infielders, they are ready for anything. Beard doesn't seem completely committed to the idea of bunting. Careful what you wish for if you're Jake Bedavian. You want the out, you wouldn't mind the sacrifice bunt. But Trevor Beard has a lot of room on the left side of the infield with Valdez protecting second base. The 1 1 from Bedavian. Beard shows bunt, brings the bat back, takes ball two, fastballs up and in. And there have been some control issues that have crept in in the last two innings for Bedavian. A rare wild pitch back in the fourth his fourth of the year. That set the stage for Corpus scoring their first run on a sack fly off the bat of Nick Anderson. Colonels are looking to at least clinch this series win against Corpus Christi. It's the Islanders' first trip to Thibodeau since 2014. Two balls, one strike, no outs. Runners on first and second. Jake Bedavian, his pitch to Beard. It's bunted back to the mound. Bedavian, no play at third. He throws to first. It's low, but snagged by Tarver for the first out of the inning. Sacrifice bunt executed beautifully by Beard. Marbox now at third. Jeffries is at second. And a base hit by Stephen Rivera-Shaheen could make this a 3-2 Corpus lead. And this shows you how much Scott Malone loves his sophomore shortstop. They trust that the number nine man can find a way to bring home some runs. Rivera Shaheen, he grounded out to Waylon LeBlanc. It's second base in the third inning. Bell will take a couple steps in front of third base. Tarver at an angle is a full step in front of first base. 
Simon is in shallow center field and normal depth by the left fielder France and the right fielder Paz. Jake Bedavian kicking the rubber a little bit and Ethan Valdez and Zach Butler recognizing this is a moment to call time and bring the infield in to have a word with their senior pitcher. One out, two to one Nichols lead, fifth inning, and Zach Butler will make his debut in today's game. Fourth year pitching coach for the Colonels. Zach made one appearance last night. Six Colonel pitchers were able to have a meet and greet on the mound at various points in last night's game, but most were used after the fifth inning. A fun start to our three game series last night. Tyler Therio came in for an out. Brandon Andrews came in for a couple. Zach Otan, a full inning of work. Colin Kramer, he came in for the last two. Always amazing when you can have eight combined pitchers get used for the final two plus innings of a game. Colonel scored first two runs in tonight's game and that was back in the first inning. They don't have a base runner since the first inning. The Islander bats coming alive in the fourth and the fifth, and we resume play with Steven Rivera Shaheen having a chance to open this game up for the Islanders. Badavian's ready to go. His pitch leads to a strike on a swing and a miss by Rivera Shaheen. After a couple costly errors in the loss against LSU on Wednesday. No errors last night for Nichols, none so far tonight. Defense on guard for the 0-1 pitch, grounded a second, backhanded by LeBlanc. He throws home, it's a little late, and nothing good comes from that decision. The runner is safe and we're tied at two. Marbach scores, Jeffries will move up to third, and Rivera Shaheen is now at first. Leadoff single by Luke Marbach coming back to haunt the Colonels. We've got the double play back in order. But Jake Bedavian desperately needs a, a ground ball to third or short. 2 2 game, runners on first and second, one out. And Corpus capitalizing on a fielder's choice to second. Rivera Shaheen will pick up that RBI. Itchy Burtz, he swings and misses at a changeup, 0-1. And this is the top of the order that has ruined a number of starting pitchers' nights in this 2019 season. And you may make it through the order one time with some success, but the second and third trips, a lot of pitchers have experienced some beleaguered outings at this stage in the game. Itchy Burtz still trying to get the ball out of the infield. Ground ball to first in the first inning. Grounder back to the mound in the third that Bedavian took care of. The only out the Colonels have recorded in the fifth is from a sacrifice. And on the 0-1 pitch, Burtz loops one softly to center, charging his Simon, and he makes the catch on the run. Both Islanders are unable to advance. Jeffries will stay at second. Rivera Shaheen at first, and there's two outs in the fifth inning. Jake Bedavian, three for three against Itchy Burtz. Itchy batted just under 400 last season, 350 season as a junior in 2019. Three for four yesterday, but an 0 for three night so far tonight. You're not out of the woodwork just yet. 2-2 game, last two runs have been scored by Corpus and they've got runners on first and second for Enrique Sanchez Jr. Jake Bedavian's pits, chopper up the middle, it's over the head of Bedavian, fielded by LeBlanc and a sidearm throw to first to in the inning. Great defense by Waylon LeBlanc at second base. Corpus ties it up, they come up with a couple hits, they bring home a run on a fielder's choice by Steven Rivera Shaheen. But Bedavian battles, and he has finished the fifth inning of work. Two hits, a run, two left aboard, no errors for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They've got two runs. The Colonels have two. 
Dirty Red will look to take the lead in the bottom of the fifth after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Tied at two to the bottom of the fifth inning from Didier Field. Leo Perez needed 101 pitches in his last start to go six innings against Abilene Christian. He is on pace for 98 pitches through eight innings, 49 pitches, and four innings of work. Leo has been able to promptly removed 12 straight kernels from the equation in this game. He gave up three singles to start the game, no base runner since. And his slider will miss down and away to open the fifth inning against Brady Bell. The 1-0, it's inside for ball two. Oh, the sights and sounds of South Louisiana on a Saturday night. We've got a helicopter in left field Helping out the sugar cane receive an extra boost before next year's harvest. And fans have now tried to figure out what they want to pay attention to more. Baseball or a helicopter. It's a tough battle. Bell will foul off this pitch, and it's now two and one count to the leadoff man in the fifth. The two-one fastball outside, ball three, and that in itself is a rarity. Only the second three ball count issued by Leo Perez tonight. No walks. Here's the 3-1 to Bell, and he fouls it into the netting. We mentioned in Brady's last at bat that he became a starter and a permanent starter at third base in the trip to Corpus Christi last year for the tournament at the Corpus Hook Stadium. It all started in what was a 12-1 non-league loss against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The 3-2 pitch misses inside. Bell secures a walk, and the Colonels have their leadoff man aboard for the first time since the first inning. The beauty of the 2018 season is that Nichols finished what was such a, a dominant pitching performance in their final five games. It propelled them to the playoffs. They played great in the Southland Conference Tournament. And we were able to move on from a frustrating start to the year. But that's what puts this season in perspective. Nichols was 1-10 in 10 at one point last year, and it was a loaded non-conference schedule and a lot of bus trips. Pensacola to Corpus and then back to Biloxi. A 6-1 start to the 2019 season. A lot of close losses in the middle, but now Nichols is 4-3 in the conference. We're tied at 2 in game 2 tonight. And here comes a bunt by Sandberg, a soft roll back to the mound. It's secured by Perez, and he throws over to first. It locks up the first out of the fifth inning, but Sandberg does his job. It's a sacrifice bunt, and Brady Bell, he now stands at second base with one out. Waylon LeBlanc will get another at bat. Three second basemen were used in last night's game for Nichols, but LeBlanc did have a hit in his last at bat. It earned him his second straight start of the weekend, his second start of the year, and he has been too good defensively to pinch hit for him in this situation. 
This is only the eighth at bat of his Colonel career. You learn a lot when you watch a guy like Whalen take over at second base and confidently assert himself in the lineup. An RBI opportunity for LeBlanc. But Perez will buy some more time and he'll step off the rubber for a second. Ethan Valdez is on deck for Nichols. Brady Bell at second base, one out, tie game, bottom of the fifth inning. Leo Perez, sophomore starter. Here comes the fastball, but it's outside for ball one, and LeBlanc did show bunt. Whalen has added a batting glove since his last trip to the plate. He's got a white batting glove on his left hand, still barehanded with his right hand. One ball, no strikes, one out. Leo Perez, a long look to second. Now the kick in the pitch and a slider for strike one. A swing and a miss by Waylon LeBlanc. Colonels have 22 players from the state of Louisiana on this roster. But France, Sandberg, Paz, Valdez, they've been big at injecting some out-of-state success. Now you've got a guy in Waylon LeBlanc from 35 minutes away. Huge opportunity in a tie game in the fifth, and he will take a 1-1 fastball outside for ball two. With Brady Bell in scoring position, Leo Perez keeping a close eye on him. Now the 2-1 fastball, low and away, ball three. Beard sheds his mask. He gets to the ball before Bell can advance. Three ball counts to two of the last three Colonel hitters after only one three ball count in the first four plus innings for Leo Perez. And that'll lead to some concern for Corpus. They've got a couple long time managers and, and assistant coaches that have been a part of this program for a long time. Marty Smith will call time. He'll have a word with his Saturday starter. Marty is in his eighth year with Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Pitching coach for the Islanders, trying to calm the nerves of his sophomore starter. And Brady Bell understands that if there is a base hit, you're probably looking at one that will allow the left center or right fielder to be charging the ball to throw it home. We're not doubting the power of Waylon LeBlanc. He could surprise us with a deep fly. But this could be a close play if it does reach the outfield. The 3-1 curve is across for strike two, and the count is full. The number nine hitter for Nichols. Quick look back to the third base coaching box where his head coach will send the signal in. Full count, one out, tie game. 3-2 pitch, popped up out of play behind home plate. Golden hour in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Sun just set about eight minutes ago. We've got all those sweaters and police pullovers and jackets out behind home plate. Chair back seating in addition in the off season last year. Everybody sitting back anxiously awaiting this next pitch. The 3-2 to LeBlanc, it's chopped to third. Quick backhand by Sanchez. He looks Bell back at second, and a toss across the diamond secures the second out of the fifth inning. And this is why Leo Perez will be the face of the Corpus Christi rotation either next year or during his senior season. Two outs, go ahead run at second. Senior shortstop Ethan Valdez batting for Nichols. And if you're Marty Smith, if you're the pitching coach for Corpus, that's exactly what you want to see from your sophomore. Call time, have a word with him on the mound, big out. Against Valdez, he has to jump out of the way on a slider up and in. It misses for ball one. Ethan Valdez led the country and hit by pitches last year. He's only been hit by four pitches this season. His body isn't upset at that total. His on-base percentage is. Two outs, tie game, a 1-0 pitch. And it's knocked foul into the netting. Strike one. 
Valdez still sports a 358 on base percentage. He is the hardest Colonel to strike out, and it's why no one will be surprised when his average ends the year around 300. He's under 250 right now. There's a lot to like about the season that he's had. The 1 1 fastball, it dips down and away for ball two. This time out on the broadcast has been brought to you by the Thibodeau Regional Helicopter. 2-2 two -two count, two outs, 2-1 two count to Valdez, go ahead, run at second. Leo Perez, his pitch, it's up and in, ball three. Leo Perez living life a little dangerously in this inning. His third three ball count. Gave up three hits to start the game, but still needed just 17 pitches to get through the first. Colonels have been aggressive early in counts, but they've eased up on that approach midway through the game. Now they're ready to retake the lead. 3-1 to Valdez. It hits the inner half for strike two. And Ethan had ducked out of the way and thought he had a one-way ticket to first base. Andrew Chestnut tells him to get back in the batter's box. Full count, two outs. Brady Bell on second. Corpus has scored the last two runs to tie it up. Leo Perez trying to survive the fifth inning. Here's his 3-2 pitch. Fly ball towards center field. Anderson tracks back, reaches up, and ends the inning. A leadoff walk is wasted. Sandberg bunted Bell to second, but LeBlanc and Valdez were unable to bring him home. We've played five from Didier Field, and we are tied up at two. No hits, no runs, one left aboard, no errors. Corpus 2, Colonels 2, we'll see you in the 6 on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Joey Werner, Nick Anderson, and Mike Williams will hit for Corpus Christi in the six. We're tied at two. Jake Badavian back on the bump for Nichols to start the six. Werner is 0 for 2. He's got a ground out back to Badavian and a ground ball to short. Both resulted in outs, and now Werner will stand in for the third time. Fastball low and away, ball one. I'm not sure if Joey Werner realizes this, but he needs to send a thank you note to Darren Thomas at the end of this season. Aaron Thomas is in his 12th year as manager of UT Arlington. A 1-0 fastball, it's low and away for ball two. Darren Thomas also might be the biggest fan of Joey Werner in the state of Texas. Scott Malone, manager for Corpus, he also loves himself some Joey Werner. But Werner did not have a place in this order until recently, until after the UT Arlington series. Davian puts his fastball on the corner and has his first strike in this at bat against Werner. Two balls, one strike, no outs. The left handed hitting D8s will take a fastball and it's low and away for ball three. After an earlier non conference series between Corpus and UTA, Darren Thomas called his good buddy Scott Malone and said, You got to get that Werner kid in more. 3 1 fastball, it hits the corner, strike two, and the count is full. Joey was replacing a major league draftee, an MLB selection from June 2018 in first base, and DH has been a tough spot to fill. 3-2 pitch, it's fouled off behind home plate, and Werner stays alive. Harrison DiNicola was such a 
problem player for this conference for the last few years. He was scooped up in the 27th round by the Marlins. But now Werner is finding a home at the number three spot for Corpus. And he's got a 3-2 pitch that he'll loft into center field. Simon takes one step back, loses the ball, now watches it drop. Werner gets a hit. He chugs towards second, turns for three, and he gets to third base for a triple. Simon lost it in the lights. And Corpus has the go-ahead run at third base. A fly ball that seemed oh so harmless, but it didn't last long. And Simon wasted no time throwing his hands up to let Austin France know that he couldn't find it. Second triple for Joey Werner. And Jake Padavian has his work cut out for him. Now you have to face the cleanup man who brought in the first run of the game for Corpus back in the fourth. Nick Anderson, a line drive sack fly to center field in the fourth. And he will step in with Joey Werner. Having some issues at third base that will now be tended to by the training staff of Corpus Christi. He's been leaning on his knees and requested a quick conversation with his coach and with one of the training staff members. All hustle. Joey Werner never eased up. He went face first into third base and he had to hold up for a little bit. But he'll give the thumbs up sign. He'll stay in the game and he represents the go ahead run. The complexion of the sky is not helping these outfielders right now. We've still got that soft pink hue and right center field. Almost a blue blackness overhead and center. And if you're Dane Simon in center field and you have to look to your right, you're blinded by the lights as they blend with that sun that set about 30 minutes ago. And you could tell the second the ball left the bat of Werner that Simon couldn't find it. Tie game, six inning, no outs, runner on third. The pitch from Bedavian, slow and outside for ball one. Nick Anderson in his fourth year starting with Corpus Christi. Southland Conference all defensive team last year. A career year hitting for Williams this season. And what a tough duo. But you've got Mike Williams and Nick Anderson going back to back. Anderson, 1-0 pitch, pops it foul, it's first base side. Tarver will give it a go in front of the Corpus dugout. He reaches over but can't secure the ball. A harmless strike, and Anderson gets to stand back in with a 1-1 count. Tarver had to feel for the sidewall and then try to extend his left arm over the railing. Werner was tempted to try to sack and score from third, but I don't think that would have worked as a sack fly, and it would have been that big out that Padavia needs to try and escape this inning. 1-1 one, one count to the cleanup man for Corpus, and the fastball, it lives low and away for ball two. Leo Perez has been on an absolute tear since the first inning. He has not allowed a hit since the opening inning. Corpus Christi coming alive in the fourth, fifth, and the sixth. The 2-1 pitch, it's down and away, ball three, and now Nick Anderson has a 3-1 count with a go-ahead run at third base. Bedavian had a 1-2-3 first inning and third inning. Just one hit allowed through the first three innings, two hits through the first four, but now three in the last two, even though the triple certainly should not have occurred in the first place. Now it's Jake Bedavian's job to get out of this inning alive. A 3-1 pitch. It'll hit Anderson right in the back. And the Islanders have runners on the corners. No outs, and Mike Williams will stand in. Go-ahead run still at third base. But now one more Islander on the base paths. Only the second opposing hitter that Jake Bedavian has hit in his senior season. He's now pitched over 40 innings with the Colonels this year, but he's got a wild pitch and an HBP in tonight's game. 
Similar situation to what the Colonels faced an inning ago when they had a runner at third base, less than two outs, and Waylon LeBlanc tried to make the play at home on a ground ball. Marbach beat the score and beat the throw and tied the game. Hit and run to put Williams in motion, but he'll foul off the pitch from Bedavian. And Nick Anderson will head back to first. With no outs and runners on the corners in a tie game, big decision for Bell at third base, Valdez at short, LeBlanc at second, or Tarver at first. If they do have a ground ball that comes their way, do you take the safe two? Or if you have an opportunity with Warner coming home, do you make that throw and hope that Chris Sandberg can tag him out? With the way Leo Perez has been pitching, you have to do everything in your power to prevent that run from scoring. No balls, one strike, no outs, and the pitch from Bedavian. Low and away for ball one. Corpus scored a run in the fourth and a run in the fifth to tie it up. And now Bedavian is up to 83 pitches in five plus innings. And the Colonels reluctantly will get some activity going in their bullpen. The 1 1 from Bedavian, fly ball foul. It'll head out of plate on the third baseline. Another important strike for Jake Bedavian. He's got a 1-2 count against Mike Williams. Williams singled in the second. He struck out in the fourth. Strikeouts have been next to impossible for these Colonel starters this weekend. That is the one and only strikeout by a Colonel starter. Now we'll see if Bedavian can go two for two in his last two battles against Mike Williams. A 1-2, it's taken in the turf for ball two. A nice job blocking it by Chris Sandberg. Nowhere to go for Anderson. He remains on first base. Sandberg is two for two at throwing out Islanders this weekend in stolen base attempts. But the attention is on Joey Werner. An accidental triple to start the sixth inning. And Bedavian will buy some more time. He'll step off the slab twist the brim of his cap. A look to first, and now he stands tall on the bump and prepares for the 2-2. He sets and fires and gets another foul ball out of play. And the bullpen will take cover down the left field line. The wind has eased up a little bit. It's down to eight miles an hour, blowing in from center field. First four innings. We were in the 10 to 15 mile per hour range and it was swirling into left center. Might have played a part in that mishap on the fly ball that allowed Werner to reach third. 2-2 Two -two from Bedavian, foul ball out of play, third base side. And the Islander dugout is loving this at bat by Mike Williams. Williams and Anderson, it's not just their bats that make them invaluable weapons in the heart of this order. They've got a couple cannons for arms, and we saw it in center field yesterday with Nick Anderson when he threw out Dane Simon trying to tag from second to third. You better be prepared in every pitch in this series between Corpus and the Colonels. A couple plus defensive teams, they both can run the base as well. Now in a tie game, and a 2-2 count. But Davian sends strike three across the corner of the plate. Williams strikes out for the second straight trip. And now there's one out, runners on the corners, and a chance to get a double play to end the inning. Luke Marbach singled and scored the game's second run for Corpus in the fifth. One out, a runner on third, a runner on first. We're tied at two. Sooner or later, the Colonels' double play fortunes have to change. They are always atop the conference, if not the country, and double plays turned. And it's a style that plays well with the type of defenders and pitchers they recruit. You've got power arms that have always been a part of this program, but you've always had guys that know how to pitch to contact with runners on base. And when you have great infielders, it makes life pretty easy. But Nichols is 11th in the conference double plays turn per game. Joey Werner is at third base. Nick Anderson is at first base. 
Jake Bedavian wants to let Nick Anderson know that he's thinking about him. Quick pickoff move over to first base. Anderson is safe. And Marbach can stand in. One out, tie game, runners on the corners. Third at bat of the night for Luke Marbach. Bedavian taps his left toe, prepares for the pitch, and watches the slider get hung, and it's smacked into left. A go-ahead base hit by Luke Marbach. Werner scores from third. Three unanswered runs by Corpus. They lead it three to two. The back end of this order for Corpus is doing the most damage tonight. Amazing. Itchy Burtz is 0 for 3. One of the top leadoff hitters in the country. Had three big hits last night. You've been able to hold Burtz and Sanchez Jr., top two hitters. They're one for six tonight. Yet Corpus has a three to two lead, and they've got runners on first and second with one out for Thomas Jeffries. Tough for Jake Bedavian to look up at that scoreboard and know that all three runs are earned. Double steal and a foul ball on a fastball down and away. It was just tipped. That disrupted the concentration of Sandberg. He was unable to hold on to it, and that was probably a good thing. A great jump for a couple high-flying speedsters for Corpus Christi. Anderson was heading to third. Marbach was ready to get to second. And that would have been a tough play if Sandberg held on to the strike. Corpus trying to create some chaos. Now an 0-1 pitch, ground ball to the right side of the infield. Tarver gets his glove on it, tosses to first, but Bedavian covers and gets the out. Adam Tarver and Jake Bedavian, some buddy ball between those two. Great chemistry on the exchange. Two outs, runners move up. But now Trevor Beard has a pressure-packed at bat. Corpus does have a 3-2 lead, but there's two outs with runners on third and second for the number eight hitter. Beard was able to lay down a sacrifice bunt in the fifth inning. Stephen Rivera Shaheen, he followed up and brought home the game's second run for Corpus on a fielder's choice. A two outs, Beard will take a pitch down and away for ball one. All three runs are earned for Jake Bedavian, even though Joey Werner ended up at third base because of a mishap in center field. Dane Simon just flat out lost the ball in the lights, never got his glove on it. And Werner now has a couple career triples that he can carry in his back pocket. Three to two Islanders. They've got runners on third and second. With two outs in the six, the 1-0 pitch it hits the corner for strike one. Jake Bedavian can still lock up this quality start if he can get one more out. 93 pitches in five and two-third innings. Six hits, five of which were singles. A 1-1 pitch, low and away for ball two. One wild pitch, one hit batter, two strikeouts, and both strikeouts courtesy of Mike Williams. Sandberg will go through the signals and signs. Davian agrees to one of the pitches, and it's a breaking ball that's knee high for strike two. 2-2 two -two with two outs and runners on third and second. Three unanswered runs by the Islanders, but a big pitch approaching for Jake Bedavian. Every single game has been like this for the Colonels in the 2019 season. Close for all nine innings. 2-2 pitch, fly ball, it's fluttering down the right field line, heading towards the bullpen, out of play. Last night's win was so important to give Nichols an increased level of confidence that they can win these close games. They've lost some leads in the eighth and the ninth inning. They've got those five one-run losses. All of their losses but one have been three runs or less. But it's a team that has built a lot of chemistry and confidence as they've overhauled their roster in 2019. A youth movement that arrives after four 
veteran, experienced teams. That's the reality of every team in the country. If you've got a bunch of new players, there's going to be some growing pains before you figure out how to win close games. Colonels did it last night. Now they're down a run in the sixth inning. With runners on third and second. The 2-2 pitch, back on the corner. Strike three, and the sixth inning is over. A couple big strikeouts by Bedavian, and that's a senior stepping up to keep his team in the game after Corpus scores three unanswered in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. An accidental leadoff triple started the trouble to open up the sixth inning. Couple hits, one run, two left aboard, no errors. Joey Werner, that leadoff triple is the difference in the sixth inning. He scores on Luke Marbach's RBI single. And for the first time since the seventh inning last night, Texas A&M Corpus Christi has a lead. Islanders three, Colonels two. Bottom of the six awaits from Didier Field after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Three to two, Corpus protecting a one-run lead. Leo Perez is back on the mound for the bottom of the sixth inning, and Nichols is still looking for their first hit since the first inning. Dane Simon, Dylan Bell, Alec Paz, the number two, three, four hitters. They'll stand in to start the six, and it's Perez missing with the slider down and away, one and zero to Simon. Colonel center fielder singled in the first inning. He scored following. Ethan Valdez's first run of the game. The 1-0 to Simon, it's left low and away for ball two. And this is how it should work if you have a mishap in the outfield like Simon did to start the inning. Put the bat in this man's hands to follow up in the bottom half. The 2-0, it's fouled off his foot, 2-1. Simon swinging at a 315 clip in his sophomore season. Two triples, two doubles, two home runs. He's up to 13 RBIs on the year, and now he's the Colonel two hitter. Leo Perez, a high wind in a pitch that runs up and in. It almost hits the left shoulder of Simon, ball three. Leo Perez. Continues to find himself with a lot of three ball counts in the last two innings. The fourth Colonel to get at least three balls and an A-B against Perez. But Perez keeps bouncing back. 3-1 across the heart of the plate for strike two. And that's three straight 3-1 three counts that he's been able to run full. Bell opened the fifth inning with a walk before he was stranded. Full count, no outs. And the 3-2 pitch, low and away, ball four. Simon draws a walk, and the Colonels have the tying run on board. Things changed dramatically for Corpus Christi on Friday night when they had to start utilizing their bullpen. And it's been the story of their season. They've been incredible this year. They're 15-10. and 10, They're 4-3 and three in Southland Conference play but they, they just don't have an identity with their pen just yet. And they're trying to piece together wins late in games. Dylan Bell, go ahead run for the Colonels. They'll have to wait because a pickoff move almost ended Dane Simon's trip to first base. Great move by Leo Perez and a quick tag by Marbach. But Simon, he gets back just in time. 
Sergio Perez has pitched to Bell. It's taken at the knees for strike one. It's Dylan Bell's third season with Nichols. He's from Hollywood, Florida. He and Adam Tarver, they've been living life large this week. Go ahead home run at LSU on Wednesday for Bell. Set up the go ahead run last night with his double down the right field line in the eighth inning. Simon takes off. The 0-1 pitch is taken inside for a ball to throw to second. It's late. Simon slides safely. He's got seven stolen bases, his second in as many games, and the tying run now stands at second. Dane Simon is looking like a man on a mission right now. It is evident that he is trying to pick up his pitcher after a rare mistake on a fly ball in center field to start the sixth inning. A 1-1 one -one to Bell, swing and a miss on a slider inside. You will live with those swings from Dylan Bell. His job is not to stand up there and butt Dane Simon over to third or ground out to the right side of the infield. You'll take it if it happens naturally. But Dylan Bell, number three hitter for a reason. Now a one-two count. And the pitch to Bell, it just misses inside for ball two. Alec Paz is on deck for the Colonels. He brought home the last RBI of the game for Nichols. That was in the first inning on a sack fly. Fourteen straight Colonels have stood in and been unable to bring a hit since that last hit of the game in the first inning. There's a back pick to second, poor throw, and Simon is back in time. It's highlighted in about 12 different colors in the Colonel's scouting report with what to expect if they have a runner on second base. Be prepared for that pickoff move from the pitcher to the shortstop. And Rivera Shaheen, he, he can really sneak up on you quickly. And Simon. Paying attention as this 2-2 pitch. It's lofted down the left field line. Tough play for Williams. He won't get there. Base hit. It'll bring home a run. Bell a hard turn around first. He stands up at second base with an RBI double. And the Colonels have tied things up at three. Dane Simon can celebrate an explosive sequence of events. And now the triple by Werner is a distant memory. We're right back to where we started in the top of the six. It's fun watching these young guns grow up before your eyes. Sophomore Dane Simon. You didn't need to tell him what was on the line as he let off the sixth inning. Three unanswered runs by Corpus. They've got a one-run lead, and then Simon draws an important walk to open the six. He steals another base, and Bell brings him home. Marty Smith, he'll call time, and the eighth-year pitching coach for Corpus Christi will assemble his infield, have a word with his starting pitcher. The first hit since the opening inning allowed by Leo Perez. Still no outs, a 3-3 game. Cleanup hitter Alec Paz, he'll get to bat. Dylan Bell now 10 RBIs on the season. A week that started with his batting average at 200. And now he's up to 222 on the season. Still has the most walks in the Southland Conference. Still has a top five on base percentage because of all those walks and his ability to get hit by pitches. Leo Perez doing a lot of listening during that conversation with Marty Smith. At some point, we've got to be able to mic up these conversations, don't we? The Zach Hess, Paul Maneri story from last night in Athens, Georgia is absolutely incredible. He resumed play and immediately bunting his paws, he pushes it up the third baseline. It's fielded by Perez and he throws to first for the out. A great sacrifice by Alec Paz. The go-ahead run is now at third base. LSU picked up a one nothing win over Georgia last night. Zach Hess was about to be pulled in the eighth inning. Paul Maneri walks out and says, you know what, great game, buddy, but 
I think it's time to make a move. And apparently, Zach Hess said, I think it's time for you to go back in the dugout. And Paul Maneri said, I love that answer. All right, the ball is yours, kid. Don't disappoint me. And Zach Hess didn't, LSU still rolling. Colonels went toe to toe with the Tigers on Wednesday night. But the second that loss happened in the 10th inning, Seth Thibodeau stopped talking about it. He brought his team together and said it's time to focus on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Don't let this one linger. Don't let one loss become three more. And with the Colonels a hit away from retaking this lead, Scott Malone will make a move. Leo Perez, pretty incredible performance outside of a frustrating first inning and now a sixth inning that has allowed Nichols to tie it up. He was brilliant in the second, third, fourth, and fifth, but he'll leave after five and a third innings of work, four hits, three runs, and he is responsible for the man standing at third base. It's Dylan Bell, Adam Tarver, will have to take on a new Corpus Christi pitcher when we return to Didier Field. We're tied at three in the sixth inning, first pitching change of the night on ESPN Radio New Orleans. David Worrell will pitch for the second time in as many games against the Colonels. We're tied at three, bottom of the sixth inning, one out. Worrell, a 6'2", 200-pound righty. He's a senior. Fastball is 87 to 90. He's got a curve, upper 60s to low 70. Also, we'll show you a cutter in the low 80s. He only faced two batters last night. With one out in the sixth inning, Adam Tarver will step up and take a first pitch knee-high strike. Tarver is 0 for 2 tonight. He's got a fly out to center field and a ground out to third. The infield is in for Corpus Christi. And the 0-1 from Worrell. Ground ball to second. Tough play for Burtz. He gets to the ball, looks Bell back to third, and tosses to first. Two outs as Itchy Burtz does it all in one quick play. Dylan Bell back to the bag, and now it's up to Austin France. Lefties are now hitting 198 off of David Worrell. Righties are at 244. Worrell is 1 0 on the year, 13 and 2 third innings at 4.6 ERA. Austin France looking to deliver that big blow and go ahead hit. Can give the Colonels a 4 3 lead. First pitch to Austin France, knee high on the inner half for strike one. France is 0 for 2 tonight. He was 0 for 4 last night. Austin France is not going to fail to produce a hit in seven at-bats this weekend. The 0-1 pitch, fly ball to short center field. Anderson approaching, and the Islander center fielder will take care of France. And a great job by David Worrell stepping in against the number five and six hitters for the Colonels. Ground out to second, fly ball to shallow center. Bell is stranded at third, but he did bring home the game's tie and run. An RBI double by Bell has knotted it up at three. And the Colonels will not have to deal with Leo Perez for the rest of the game. He goes five and a third innings, allows four hits and three runs. The Colonels get a run in the sixth inning on one hit, one left aboard, no errors. And we are tied at three after six innings between Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and Nichols. This is Colonel Baseball on ESPN Radio New Orleans.
Jake Badavian's next pitch will be his 100th of the game, but he will stick around for the seventh inning. We're tied at three. Corpus Christi and the Colonels meeting on a Saturday night in Thibodeau. The number nine, one, and two hitters will bat for A&MCC. Stephen Rivera Shaheen will swing at the first pitch and tap it foul up the first baseline. Jake Badavian was able to fight through a frustrating six inning, and now he has been rewarded with an opportunity to at least start the seventh on the mound. The six foot, 180 pound righty. Still coming up with those first pitch strikes. Rivera Shaheen 0 for 2, but he did bring home an RBI in his last at bat with the fielder's choice. And he'll take the 0 1 fastball low and away for ball one. Davian approaching a new season high in pitches. The 1-1. One, one. Back on the corner, strike two, and that is a call that the Davian has been able to consistently get all night, especially against these lefties. One ball, two strikes, no outs. Two strikeouts in his last four batters face for Bedavian. But the one-two changeup misses just low and away. Ball two. This next pitch will match Jake Bedavian's season high for pitches in a start. The 2-2, it's clubbed out of play, foul behind the Colonel dugout. 2-2 count, leadoff man standing in for A&MCC. Colonel scored the first two runs of the game. Corpus spread out the next three in the fourth, fifth, and sixth, but Nichols just tied it up in the bottom of the sixth. Two balls, two strikes to Steven Rivera Shaheen. The pitch is knocked foul, and it rolls its way up the third baseline to keep the count at two and two. 104 pitches in his last start at Central Arkansas. Now 105 back at home in Thibodeau tonight. The Davian ready to go for the 2-2. Takes something off the changeup, but Rivera Shaheen just hacks it foul. This is what happens when you have to deal with Steven Rivera Shaheen and Itchy Burtz in back-to-back -back at bats. Burtz is the leadoff man. Rivera Shaheen hitting ninth. Burtz is in the on-deck circle, and they both have a similar approach. A 2-2 fastball outside. It hits off the glove of Sandberg. Full count. And this is what happens following three straight foul balls. You try to place that pitch instead of trusting the, the follow through and location. Credit Rivera Shaheen, he is a combative hitter. 3-2 fastball, loop towards left, approaching his France, he charges and gets underneath it. He watches it glide into his glove for the first out of the inning. Jake Bedavian continuing to earn the confidence of his coaches. You keep him in for a reason. Jake Bedavian delivers to start the inning. Itchy Burtz is still looking for his first hit tonight. The 350 hitter, 0 for 3. Corner infielders are in. And showing bunt is Burtz, but he knocks it foul. Texas A&M Corpus Christi has put together a team this season that reminds you more of their 2014, 2013, and 2011 teams than really any other run during Scott Malone's 12 years in Corpus. Those three teams won 55 Southland Conference games, 55 and 36. The 0-1 fastball by Bedavian, it's low and away for ball one. Islanders are 15 and 10 on the year. They've won four of their first seven in Southland Conference play, but they lost last night to Nichols. They're tied up in the seventh inning tonight. Here's a 1-1 curve, and it's a slow roller over to set, second. LeBlanc fields and flips to first. Itchy Burtz is out, and that's an 0 for 4 night for the Islander second baseman. Bases are empty for Enrique Sanchez Jr. He's one for three with a single and a run in the fourth. 
even though the Islanders haven't won 17 plus games since 2014, they've always been in the playoff hunt. Sanchez will take a fastball. It's left low and away for ball one. But the tiebreaker has been unkind to Corpus the last couple years. A 30 and 26 season last year, but they missed the conference tournament. The 1 0 fastball to Sanchez. It's back on the corner for strike one. A multi team tiebreaker for eighth. Islanders finished 14 and 16 in conference play. But it was UNO and Nichols who won the tiebreaker. A 1 1 pitch to Sanchez, low and away, ball two. We're tied at three, top of the seventh, bases are empty, two balls, one strike, two outs, and Sanchez will line one foul down the first baseline. Clears the bleachers and heads towards the parking lot. Count now sits at two and two. A two two from Bedavian. It's a curve in the turf. Ball three. It's been a lively day on this campus. We had a community event with a lot of musicians and tailgating happening near the football stadium mid afternoon. Spring football, of course, and Full play for the defending Southland Conference champs. Now our attention turns to Ben Meyer Diamond where the 3-2 pitch from Bedavian is nubbed up the first baseline. It's handled by Tarver and he walks the ball to first. The seventh inning ends with a 1-2-3 pitching performance by Jake Bedavian, a new season high in pitches. Seven innings, six hits, three runs, and a chance to still pick up this win Colonel offense, they're ready to come to the plate in the bottom of the seventh inning on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Another great nine of Southland Conference baseball. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning at Ray E. Didier Field on the campus of Nichols State University. Corpus Christi has scored three runs. The Colonels have scored three runs. Brady Bell, Chris Sandberg, and Waylon LeBlanc are scheduled to hit for Nichols in the bottom of the seventh. Bell drew a leadoff walk in the fifth inning. But the Colonels were unable to bring him home. A big fastball will take care of Brady Bell on the first pitch of the seventh, a swing and a miss as David Worrell finding his velocity and leaving nothing to chance in his second appearance of the weekend. Here's the 0 1 to Bell. And the curve is clubbed foul and out of play behind the Colonel dugout. Quick 0 2 count, courtesy of David Worrell. Brady Bell still leads the Colonels in batting average. A couple hits yesterday, a couple RBIs. They were all late in the game. The 0-2 fastball is outside for ball one. Here's how sweet of a Saturday we've had in the Southland Conference. New Orleans just went on the road and won in extra innings against Sam Houston State. 1-2 to Bell, it misses outside. Two balls, two strikes. Sam Houston, they fall to six and two in conference play. Remember, Nichols Took two out of three from UNO earlier this season. The 2-2 two -two from Worrell. Sky high pop up. It'll stay in the infield. It's pushed into foul territory. And Enrique Sanchez Jr. comes up with the catch. He was midway between third base and home plate. There's one out to start the seventh. 
Southeastern. They outlast Abilene Christian and pick up a 12 to nine win. Tulane and HBU just played a great game in New Orleans. HBU has had a rough year, and that, that's really uncharacteristic for them. They're now 5 and 17. They lose it in 11 innings, 3 to 2. With one out in a tie game in the bottom of the seventh. Chris Sandberg will take a first pitch. It's up and in for ball one. Tulane has been ambushing teams with their offense this season. They scored 31 runs in two games against Lamar earlier in the year. The 1 0 to Sandberg. It misses up and in for ball two. Colonel Catcher. Grounded out to short in the second inning. Sacrifice bunt for him in the fifth. One of the hottest hitting catchers that Seth Thibodeau has ever had the privilege of managing in his nine years with Nichols. A 339 hitter. And he is becoming an everyday catcher. Two balls, no strikes. One out, tie game in the seventh. Pitch to Sandberg, down and in, but it hits enough of the plate for strike one. Worrell only faced two batters in last night's game against Nichols, but he has taken over in relief of Leo Perez. It's 2-1 to Sandberg, foul tip, but it stays in the glove, and a nice job holding it by Trevor Beard as the count runs to two and two. One inning, no hits. Three up, three down for Worrell so far, but he misses on the 2-2 pitch. It's up and in, and the count is full for Sandberg. Waylon LeBlanc still in the on-deck circle. He is having a passionate conversation with Walt Jones right now, the Colonel hitting coach, right in his ear. The 3-2 pitch, high pop-up. It's into short right field. Jeffries is working with Burtz at second base. It is the second baseman, Burtz, and he makes the catch. He calls off Jeffries in right field, and there's two quick outs to start the seventh. With the exception of the first and sixth inning, this has been the story of the night for Nichols. They've been unable to get ahead in the count, and that's a credit to Leo Perez and David Worrell. They've consistently established the strike zone, and we've had a lot of three up, three down innings. Colonels are trying to avoid their, their fourth 1-2-3 inning tonight with two outs and the base is empty. LeBlanc will take a first pitch strike. Sophomore is 0 for 2 tonight, a ground out back to the mound and a ground ball to third base that Sanchez smothered for the out. The 0-1 fastball, it's low and in and off the glove again of Beard, ball one. There's just something about late March baseball in the bayou. It leads to a lot of people tuning in to love them some Nickel State baseball. Waylon LeBlanc trying to set the stage for a go-ahead hit. It won't happen. A 1-1 ground ball to third. It's covered and smothered by Sanchez. It's what he's done all nine, and he tosses to first. A 1-2-3 seventh inning, and Worrell is now the pitcher of record. He's been flawless. An inning and two-thirds, no hits. No runs allowed. We'll keep this game tied through seven innings. Corpus three, Colonels three. Glad to have you along for the ride. Especially glad to have Tyler Trahan listening to us in New Orleans tonight. Corpus, they'll head to the plate in the top of the eighth on ESPN Radio New Orleans.
Jake Bedavian is back for more. We're tied at three, top of the eighth inning from Thibodeau. Joey Werner, Nick Anderson, and Mike Williams will bat for Corpus. It's the three, four, five hitters for the Islanders. It's already a career high in pitches for Bedavian. He's at 117, and his first pitch of the eighth inning, it misses down and away for ball one against Werner. This is the sixth time in two seasons with Nichols that Bedavian has cleared the 100 pitch plateau. Tie game. And a 1 0 to Werner that he swings and misses at. And Bedavian still has a velocity. The flick of the wrist fastball. And Jake Bedavian working quickly with Joey Werner. Werner will sit back and take a ball outside. Bedavian turns to the curve. And now it's two balls and two strikes for Jake Bedavian. Joey Werner trying to figure out a way to get on board against Jake Bedavian. The 2-2 pitch, it's down and in for ball three. And this has been a rarity in itself for Bedavian. Not a lot of three ball counts and certainly no issues with walks. He has yet to allow a walk in tonight's game. Full count to the leadoff man. The 3-2. A high hop to second, waiting on it is LeBlanc from the edge of the outfield grass. He throws it over to first for the first out of the eighth inning. And that's a feel good moment for Bedavian after Werner came up with the luckiest triple that we have seen this season on a fly ball that should have been caught in left center, but that ended up as the go ahead hit for Corpus Christi. An inning later, Colonels found a way to tie it up now there's one out in the eighth inning in a 3-3 game, and Nick Anderson will take a slider on the corner for strike one. The Davian's career high and pitches in a start was 115 before tonight. He's over 120 with one out in the eighth. The 0-1 slider, it's left low and away for ball one. No changes defensively for the Colonels. We had four players that were a part of second base last night. Three that actually played in the field at second, but it's still Waylon LeBlanc out there tonight. 1-1 one, one fastball, it's low and away for ball two. And Bedavian continues to use the rhythm kick with his left leg, or if the bases are empty, he'll do that little hesitation push, and almost karate kick it. A 2-1 fastball into the bat, foul ball off the backstop, 2-2. Nick Anderson, a couple quick strikes as he tries to pick up his first hit of the game. He brought home the first run for Corpus in the fourth. It was an RBI on a sack fly to center. He was hit by a pitch in the sixth inning. He lined out to center field in the second. Two balls, two strikes, one out. The pitch from Bedavian, line towards short. Valdez is ready, comes up with the catch. Couple quick outs to start the eighth inning. And now there's two down, the bases are empty. And Mike Williams is up to the plate for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. What a gutty performance for Bedavian. It was easy to think his day would be done in the six. Warner ended up at third base to lead off the inning. Then Nick Anderson was hit by a pitch. But Mike Williams struck out. And now Williams will foul off the first pitch against Bedavian with two down in the eighth inning. After the Williams strikeout, Marbach came up with an RBI single to give Corpus the lead. But Bedavian was able to dig down and get a couple of outs to not allow that lead to grow. And now the 0-1 pitch is fouled off behind home plate. Williams, he just arrived in the batter's box and he's already got an 0-2 count. Bases are empty and a tie game in the eighth. No balls, two strikes, two away. Bedavian's pitch is lofted out of play behind the Colonel dugout. If you're in the neighborhood, stop by. We won't charge you for a ticket at this point, and the jambalaya is still hot. We're being handed out to all in attendance that are lucky enough to stop by our concession stand. The 0-2 pitch, it's up and away, ball one. Five Colonels pitched last night, four in relief. Jake Bedavian 
doing the bullpen a favor tonight as he tries to break through this wall, finish his eighth inning of work against the number five hitter for Corpus. One ball, two strikes, two away. The Davians pitch, foul tipped, and the count remains one and two. We'll see Shane Mejia pitch tomorrow for Nichols. He is the first freshman to be a part of the weekend rotation in Seth Thibodeau's nine years with Nichols. And he might be pitching for a sweep. Jake Bedavian trying to keep this game tied. His one-two pitch leads to a strikeout, and that's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back at bats where Williams has been K'd by Bedavian. A new career high in pitches for Bedavian, and he's gone eight full innings and allowed just three runs against the top hitting team in the conference. One, two, three in the eighth. That's back-to-back -back one, two, three innings for Bedavian. We've played seven and a half innings from Thibodeau. We're still tied up. Colonels ready to take the lead in the bottom of the eighth on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Ethan Valdez is approaching his 200th career game with the Colonels. We are tied up in the bottom of the eighth in Thibodeau tonight. And Ethan Valdez will lead things off in the bottom of the eighth. The number one, two, and three hitters will look to give the Colonels a go-ahead run. Scott Malone not messing with a good thing. He will keep David Worrell in the game. And Worrell will miss on his first pitch of this A-B against Valdez. Ball one down and away. Valdez came up with a hit on the first pitch against Leo Perez in tonight's game. That was a single into left field that scored the first run. And now a 1-0 pitch is up and in to Valdez. It's 2-0. Three straight hits to start the game for the Colonels. They have just one since then. But after allowing Corpus to take a 3-2 lead, Nichols tied it up in the six. Now we're in the bottom of the eighth, and Valdez has a 2-0 count. The pitch from Worrell. Down and in, ball three, and with Dane Simon on deck, scary situation emerging for the Islanders. Valdez will be in a take mindset, but that does not mean that a green light will not be given to Ethan Valdez. 3-0 from Worrell, across the inner half for strike one, a knee-high pitch, and Worrell has the count at three and one. Williams is in shallow left field. Anderson, he's in center, but he's really approaching the infield. And now a 3-1 to Valdez is left low and away for ball four. The shift is irrelevant. Valdez takes all five pitches, and he leads off the eighth inning with a walk. That is a nightmare development for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Not only is it a leadoff walk and a tie game in the eighth inning, you've got the best base runner for the Colonels on first base. And Nichols has shown an ability to run all weekend. Simon has a couple stolen bases. He stole one earlier in today's game, and that was the most important stolen base of the weekend for Nichols. Dane Simon led off the six with a walk, stole second, and then Bell brought him home with an RBI double to tie the game. Dane Simon will show bunt with a runner on and no outs. But he's unable to keep it fair on the first pitch. It rolls up the first baseline foul. This is a paramount priority for any member of a Nichols baseball recruiting class. You, you just have to bunt. You better be able to. It doesn't matter if you're a cleanup hitter, a catcher, 
or a hot hitting, hitting center fielder like Dane Simon is. Coach Tibb wants Valdez at second, and Simon will show bunt again. But Worrell, he guns the ball over to first, and Valdez has to jump back on first base. Colonels picked up a 5-3 to three win last night with five unanswered runs, and they all happened in the seventh and eighth inning. They've got the game tied up in the eighth tonight. The 0-1 pitch to Simon, low and away, ball one. Enrique Sanchez continuing to dart home from third base as he prepares for this bunt. Marbach trying to hold at first base, and Simon hoping that he can bump this ball towards the first baseman. Simon squares early, and another pickoff move is attempted by Worrell, and this time Valdez has to dive back to the bag, and he is keeping his back to Worrell after touching on to first base. Both pitcher and base runner having a little fun with each other at this point. Serious situation for Valdez on his game. The 1-1 to Simon, he brings the bat back and takes ball two outside. That was a close pitch, Worrell can't believe it. He's halfway between the mound and home plate and gave an extra long look to Andrew Chestnut. Call stands, it's two and one. Sanchez creeping in from third base. Simon shows bunt, and here's the 2-1 pitch, and it's rolled up the third baseline, barehanded by Sanchez. He looks to second, no play there, and he gets the out at first, but the speed of Ethan Valdez, certainly the difference. Sacrifice bunt by Simon. Go-ahead run is at second with one out, and Dylan Bell standing in for the Colonels. Sanchez went to the bare hand with the intent to throw to second, and he got ready to cock that arm back. Smart decision. He had no chance of getting Valdez. Who else would you rather have up at the in, in this situation in a tie game in the eighth inning, the big number 14, and you know that Corpus is going to play the situational game. But even though we're about to see a lefty, and Dylan Bell will have to – Try to figure out a way to correct some of his struggles against lefties. Still an ideal Colonel candidate to give Nichols an eighth inning lead. Great outing of relief for David Worrell. Leo Perez had to leave in the sixth inning, but Worrell, he's held it down since then. He'll leave as the pitcher of record if Ethan Valdez can come home. But it's now up to another lefty reliever for Texas A&M Corpus Christi if they are to pick up a win against Nichols tonight. One out, tie game, eighth inning, and a call to the bullpen for Scott Malone and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. We'll fill you in on the latest Islander to step in in this situation. We're tied at three. There's one out in the eighth inning. Pitching change for Corpus on ESPN Radio New Orleans. High game, eighth inning, one out, go ahead run at second base for the Colonels. And Texas A&M Corpus Christi will send Cody LeCompte into the game, senior from Cypress, Texas. He transferred in from Blinn College, 5'9", 177 pounder. Righties are hitting 4'10 off of him, but he is in for a one and done trip. LeCompte trying to take care of the lefty, Dylan Bell. Lefties are batting 217 off of LeCompte. Valdez at second base. Here's the first pitch of the night from LeCompte. Hold up, pause, he pivots and looks back Valdez at second. 
Valdez opened the inning with the walk. Simon sacrificed him to second. And now Dylan Bell trying to make the most of this one opportunity against LeCompte. Cody's pitch, it's left outside for ball one. Alec Paz is a right-handed hitting right fielder. He's in the on-deck circle, and it would be shocking if LeCompte sticks around to face him. Dylan Bell tied things up in his last at bat. Just the most beautiful bloop doubled on the left field line that you've ever seen. Comp sets and pitches and gets a swinging strike to Dylan Bell. He came inside. Bell was trying to jack that one out of the park down the right field line. That is Dylan Bell Boulevard in right field. Just a sweet spot during batting practice and games. If you watch Dylan Bell, lace line drives into right field, but he was going for a, a big walloping shot. Now the count sits at one and one. Pitch from LeCompte, up and in, ball two. Tenth appearance of the year for LeCompte. He's got a 6.15 ERA. One and one with 23 hits allowed in 16 and two-third innings, but he does have 16 strikeouts. It's a 2-1 count to Dylan Bell. Left side of the infield is wide open. Bell. Settles for the 2-1, home run swing, but he's tardy, 2-2. Two and two. And it became a one-handed swing on the follow through. And if you think that you can stick with this shift on Dylan Bell, be careful, he went opposite field on that last at bat. Perfectly placed fly ball down the left field line. 2-2 two -two count, one away, Valdez is at second. Pitch from LeCompte, check, swing down and away for strike three. Andrew Chestnut checks in with Jeff Minton. And the third base umpire signals strike three. Two outs, runner on second. Alec Paz is at the plate and LeCompte will stay in the game. This is when you're curious to see if the numbers do play out and a righty can continue to hit LeCompte like most opponents have this year. First pitch to Paz, slow roll to third. It's snagged by Sanchez. He throws on the run and Paz is out by half of a step. How about Cody LeCompte? Tie game, eighth inning on the road. Go ahead, run it second with one out. And against the number three and four hitters, he gets a strikeout and a ground out. Credit LeCompte, credit Scott Malone for sticking with his lefty. Now we're off to the ninth inning with the game still tied at three. Nichols has just one hit since the first inning, but their pitching has been rock solid all night. They'll need one more great inning. If they are to win this thing in the ninth inning. Jake Bedavian, he's done his job. Now it's time for the Colonel relievers to try to keep this thing alive and to keep the game tied up. Nichols three, Corpus Christi three. To the top of the ninth we go on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Ninth inning from Thibodeau. We're tied at three between Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and Nichols. Brandon Andrews. This is a role he has relished in his second season with the Colonels. He has become the face, if not the ace, of this bullpen. Big inning of work last night. He's six in the conference in pitching appearances. 
But based on his performance over the last few weeks, he will have to grow accustomed to moving up that leaderboard. Nichols has found a, a lot of leadership from their lefties, and they've got some great situational relievers available. But Brandon Andrews has been all reliable, and he's been such a steady hand late in games that he will find himself on the mound ninth inning, tied at three with Luke Marbach, Thomas Jeffries, and Trevor Beard hitting for Corpus. Six, seven, eight hitters, they'll bat against Brandon Andrews. His ERA is down to 1.98, 13 and two-third innings this year, only three earned runs, but he doesn't allow a lot of hits, doesn't allow many walks. That's exactly what you need in a tie game in the ninth inning. Make Marbach and company earn it. Marbach has had a great night. A couple hits in his last two at-bats, including the go-ahead RBI. Pitch from Andrews, slider on the corner, strike one. This is Andrews' fifth appearance in the last six games for Nichols. Right-handed reliever from North Carolina gets a swinging strike on an 0-1 fastball. Marbach falls behind 0-2. Following just an absolutely brilliant performance by Jake Bedavian. This is what you want to see in the first at bat since Bedavian had to exit the game. No balls, two strikes, no outs. The pitch from Andrews. Strike three, a desperate swing, no chance for Marbach. Three pitches, three strikes, one out in the ninth inning. Thomas Jeffries, a ground out to shortstop in the second inning, a single in the fifth, a ground out back to Bedavian in the sixth. But with one out and a tie game and a lefty coming to the plate, we will reintroduce ourselves to Seth Thibodeau and the ninth year manager on his way to the mound to pull Brandon Andrews. How about Brandon Andrews night? Three pitches, a strikeout, and now an exit back to the dugout. He did his job. The Colonels will hope that the lefty on lefty matchup will pay similar dividends. The Colonels will turn to Brian Taylor with one out in a tie game. Jake Bedavian went eight innings. He allowed six hits, had four strikeouts, three earned runs in 134 pitches. Brandon Andrews, three pitches, one out, and his day is done. With one out in a tie game, we'll see if the Colonels can keep this thing knotted up at three. We're back to Didier Field for the rest of the ninth inning after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Zach Otan will get the nod in the ninth inning. One out, we're tied at three, and it's Otan that will step into pitch against Thomas Jeffries, the fourth. The lefty on lefty look, it paid big dividends for the Colonels last night. That's why we saw four relievers replace Trevor Kilcrease. Brandon Andrews, he did his job. Now it's up to Otan to keep this game tied. Otan's first pitch, knee high strike on the corner, 0 and 1. And we should have known that it would be Otan coming in to replace Brandon Andrews. They're just going toe-to-toe -to -toe in appearances this year. They're both top ten in the conference in appearances. The 0-1 pitch from Otan, it's low and away for ball one. 
We'll see who wins that battle at the conclusion of the season. This is the 13th appearance for OTAN. Brennan Andrews up to 12 appearances. We saw Zach last night, his third appearance this week. And his 1-1 fastball just left a little low and away for ball two. He pitched in a couple games against New Orleans and two of three against Central Arkansas. A full inning against LSU on Wednesday. Now he gets a pop-up towards third base. The 2-1 pitch will result in the second out of the inning. Brady Bell pushed back against the dugout. He had just enough room, and he also had Walt Jones, the Colonel hitting coach, telling him exactly how much room he had. Good communication for the Colonels, and there's two outs in the ninth inning. Corpus had to claw and fight their way back from a 2-0 deficit to score one run in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. But Dylan Bell tied things up with an RBI double in the bottom of the sixth. Now there's two outs, top of the ninth. We're still tied at three. Bases are empty for Trevor Beard. Otan's pitch to Beard, nails the corner for strike one. Zach Otan is still looking for his first win of the season. And we do love walk-offs in Colonel Country. Otan trying to finish up the ninth and let his team win it in the bottom of the inning. The 0-1 fastball just misses down and away for ball one. One ball, one strike, two away. Otan's pitch, slider on the corner for strike two. With the exception of one poor performance this year for Zach Otan, he has been unbelievably consistent. One bad start, one bad relief appearance against McNeese, locked down in every other game. And now a strikeout to end the ninth on a one-two fastball, flailing at the ball was Beard, and the Colonels are racking up a lot of strikeouts in the last three innings. That's the sixth strikeout in the last three and a third. And Corpus Christi will have to hope that their pitching can allow for extra innings. It's a 1-2-3 ninth following a 1-2-3 eighth and seventh inning for the Islander hitters. We're tied at three as the Colonels will look to walk it off in the bottom of the ninth after this break on ESPN Radio New Orleans. We're tied at three in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nichols already has one walk-off win on the year. They'll look for their second with Adam Tarver, Austin France, and Buddy Bell in a perfect position to give the Colonels two wins in their first two games of this three-game series against Corpus. Dane Simon secured the first win of the season for Nichols with a 14th inning walk-off home run to left center field against Southern Illinois. Adam Tarver. He'll take a first pitch ball up and in from Cody LeCompte. It's been a home run filled week for Adam Tarver. A couple on Wednesday at LSU. He's 0 for 3 tonight. A 1 0 pitch. Check swing for ball two. Tarver held up at the last possible second. Great resistant work by his wrists. That was a tough pitch to hold up on. Wind has died down with the clock striking 845 tonight. 
LeCompte goes back to the corner and hits it for strike one. We've gone from 10 to 15 mile an hour south-southeast winds to start the game. All flags in left, left center and center field hardly moving. The 2-1 to Tarver, big home run cut, but he fails to make contact. Strike two. The batter's eye in center field has the welcome to the did sign hanging high above the 400-foot wall. The American fat flag had been rippling all nine, and now it's just draped over the top of that batter's eye. The 2-2 to Tarver. It's a breaking ball, and it strikes him out. Tarver reaches on it, and that's three straight strikes by LeCompte after falling behind 2-0. One out in the ninth inning. The big advantage for Cody LeCompte, there hasn't been an asserted hierarchy established by this Corpus Christi bullpen. It's allowed him to pitch with confidence. He'll stick around to take on Austin France. Fastball to France, it's back on the corner for strike one. LeCompte came in for a lefty-on-lefty -lefty situation, but he was so good against Dylan Bell, he struck out Bell, that he stuck around to face Paws, and now Tarver, three up, three down. The 0-1 to France, he knocks this one towards left field, charging his Williams, he dives, gets his glove on it, Williams comes up with the catch. Head first and sliding. Absolute robbery by Williams. Instead of a one-out single by France, he's now 0 for 8 this weekend. Williams will creep us closer and closer to extra innings. Two outs, bases empty. Brady Bell steps in for the Colonels. Bell drew a walk in the fifth inning. He's got a ground out to short, a pop up to third base. Brady Bell watches a first pitch fastball miss low and away for ball one. This is empty, two outs. We're tied at three in the bottom of the ninth inning. A 1-0 pitch, one hops its way into the mitt of Beard, ball two. Chris Sandberg is on deck for the Colonels. 3.30 hitting catcher, would love to step in. 2-0 fastball, no chance for Bell. He's late on the swing, two and one. A couple guys looking to make their mark with this program and set the stage for their first ever walk-off hits with Nichols. 2-1 to Bell, late swing, and he pops it foul and out of play. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A 3-3 game in the bottom of the ninth. LeCompte leaves his fastball up high, and the count is full. In a pressure-packed situation for Cody LeCompte. He's been excellent, and now he'll try to finish off a 1-2-3 ninth. The 3-2 to Bell, late swing, fastball drive-by, and it strikes out Bell. Put that pitch up and in, he just drove it into the mitt of Beard, and Bell tried to uppercut on the swing. Three strikeouts for the last five Colonels in a 1-2-3 ninth inning, extra innings. Free baseball in Thibodeau tonight. We're tied at three as we get set for the top of the 10th on ESPN Radio New Orleans. We play on at Ben Meyer Diamond. Tenth inning, we're tied at three. Everybody else in the Southland Conference has wrapped up their Saturday game. 
All eyes are on the Colonels in Corpus Christi. Steven Rivera Shaheen, he will lead things off in the top of the 10th against Zach Otan. And Otan fires in a fastball, and it hits off the right leg of Rivera Shaheen. He is hit by a pitch to start the 10th inning. Rivera Shaheen has some scary speed. It's more based on his ability to run the bases. But now you've got a contact hitter at the plate who earned his nickname because his style is so similar to Ichiro Suzuki's. If you're an infielder, if you're an outfielder, you are on guard for this at bat. Itchy Burt shows bunt, but he can't make contact. Strike one. 3-3 game, 10th inning, only 10 combined hits in this game. One extra base hit for Corpus, and it was an accidental extra base hit. The ball was lost on a fly ball to center field that led to Joey Werner's triple. Dylan Bell had a bloop double for the Colonels. The rest are singles. The 0-1 to Itchy Burtz. He bunts it up the first baseline. Otan covers quickly, sidearm toss, and he gets the out. Otan with his left hand. Just the sidearm flip to the bag. Advancing to second base is Rivera Shaheen. He's the go-ahead run. Itchy Burtz is out on the sacrifice. He's 0 for 4 today, but he does his job in the 10th inning. And Enrique Sanchez Jr. in a perfectly placed position to give Corpus the lead. Zach Thibodeau will play the numbers game. Zach Otan came in to take on a steady slew of lefties. He also was able to come up with outs against Trevor Beard, the right-handed hitting catcher. But after Itchy Burtz bunts it up the first baseline, Zach Otan will cede control to a righty reliever. Both Otan and Brandon Andrews, not extensive work tonight, but they, they've done the most with what they've been required to do. And now the Colonels can get Matthew Harrison into the game, and he will take on the most prolific power hitter for Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Enrique Sanchez Jr. with 20 RBIs on the season. He's played in 25 games. He's got a hit and a run, and he will look to hand Corpus a 10th inning lead. Pitching change from Thibodeau. We're tied at three in the 10th on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Matthew Harrison will make his sixth appearance of his Colonel career. First year, a right-handed reliever. Enters in a pressure pack situation. Tenth inning, tie game, one out. Go ahead, run at second base. Colonel scored two runs in the first, one in the sixth. Corpus, a run in the fourth, fifth in the sixth. Enrique Sanchez, Jr., he's got a runner at second. Pitch to him, his line towards right field. It'll land for a base hit. Paz approaches, bobbles, throws the ball in and prevents a run from scoring. And Alec Paz heads up play to waste no time just launching it home after securing what became a bobbled ball. 
And you knew Sanchez was going to be hunting that first pitch fastball. Matthew Harrison has gone four straight appearances without allowing a run. He was really good in, at finishing his inning of work against LSU on Wednesday. Five innings, two hits, no runs his last four appearances. He's got a 1.80 ERA in five innings of work. And with one out and runners on the corners, Joey Werner will get a free trip to first base. He's intentionally walked, and the bases are now loaded for Nick Anderson. Colonels will play the odds at this stage in the game and ensure that their infielders can come home. Nick Anderson, he's the cleanup hitter, and he is not accustomed to having opposing pitchers walk the preceding player to give him a chance to hit. But that's what the situation calls for in the 10th inning. We're tied at three, and Zach Butler will request time. Fourth-year Colonel pitching coach. He's back on the mound to meet with Matthew Harrison. A year ago, Harrison was getting set for another weekend game at Meridian Community College. He grew up in Mississippi. This is why you work so hard to cut it with the Colonels, get that look as a, a D1 baseball player. And if you don't dream of these situations, what are you doing? Chance to get out of an extra inning jam and give your team a opportunity to win it in the bottom of the 10th for Harrison. He watched Colin Kramer pick up the first win of his D1 career last night. Harrison, he wants the same situation to play out for him tonight. He does have a save. He picked it up last Sunday against Central Arkansas. Feels like a save situation. Bases loaded, one out tie game, but Harrison one hops the ball into the mitt of Chris Sandberg, ball one to Nick Anderson. Anderson brought home the first run of the game for Corpus in the fourth inning on a sack fly to center. He's 0 for 2 with the sack fly. He was also hit by a pitch in the sixth. Bases are loaded in the 10th inning. And the 1-0 pitch is down and in again. Steven Rivera Shaheen was hit by a pitch to start the inning. Itchy Burtz bunted him over to second. Enrique Sanchez Jr. just singled into right field. And Joey Werner was intentionally walked. Two balls, no strikes, one out, or tied at three in the top of the tenth. Harrison's pitch, it's low and away, gets past Sandberg. Nowhere to go at third base for Steven Rivera Shaheen. He is brought back to the bag. And that's a smart decision. He might have been able to score, but if not, do you really want to waste that play on a 3-0 count? Corpus will live to see another pitch, especially with three straight erratic pitches from Harrison. And he did not want to deal with the fastball and just send in a straight line drive to a hot hitting cleanup hitter. Went with the off speed pitch and it ends up rolling its way to the backstop. Anderson can pretty much just put this bat down. It's a 3-0 count, bases loaded with one away, and Harrison misses down and in. A four-pitch walk to give Corpus a 10th inning lead. Second RBI of the night for Anderson makes it 4-3, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. And now you're just trying to keep it together. You can come back from a run deficit, but if Mike Williams gets a hit here, that is a scary situation to consider in the bottom of the 10th. Mike Williams has a lot of pent-up frustration. He'll have to wait a few more minutes before he'll get a chance to swing away. Colonels will make another call to their bullpen. Bo Balladu will, will try to become that lefty lucky charm that can prevent any more runs from scoring for Corpus. Williams has struck out his last three plate appearances, and he will see a new Nichols pitcher enter the game in the 10th inning, Corpus. Back on top, 4-3, to three, following a four-pitch walk with the bases loaded. Bases are still loaded. There's only one out. Islanders 4, Colonels 3, pitching change on ESPN Radio New Orleans.
Bo Bellotto was excellent in his one inning of work against LSU on Wednesday. He came into the eighth inning, needed eight pitches to get three outs. Corpus leads it four to three in the tenth. There's one out, the bases are loaded, and Bellotto will face off against a really skilled, strong left-handed left fielder. Mike Williams having a forgettable ninth at the plate. He's 0 for 4. He struck out three times, but he's a 338 hitter. A couple home runs, 14 RBIs on the year, but now a team high 20 strikeouts for him. Pitch from Bellotto, swing and a miss on a late swing, and the follow through was with one hand for Mike Williams. Bellotto has needed just 10 pitches his last two outings. He has made quick work of the last couple opponents that he's faced off against, but this is his first relief appearance at home in 15 days. The 0-1 fly ball foul, and it's out of play behind the Colonel dugout. No balls, two strikes, one out. Steven Rivera Shaheen just scored for Corpus to give them a four to three lead. Sanchez now standing at third, Werner's at second, Anderson is at first base. Mike Williams wondering why he has only seen deceptive strikes tonight and teammates like Nick Anderson get an RBI on a four pitch walk. The 0-2 to Williams, low and away, ball one. It's been a great debut season for this big left-handed reliever. Bo Balladu still in a perfect position to keep this game competitive, give the Colonels a chance to win it in the 10th. One ball, two strikes, one out. Balladu gets his sign from Sandberg. Here comes the fastball, check swing. First strike, three, and that's four straight strikeouts for Williams, Balladu. An assertive sequence of events. He came right after Mike Williams, jumped ahead 0-2 in the count, threw a ball, then came back with that cut fastball. Valadu gets the strikeout, and now there's two outs in the 10th inning for Corpus. Two strikeouts in the ninth for Corpus, struck out once in the eighth, a couple times in the sixth. Islanders enjoying a 4-3 lead, but they have earned every single run. Luke Marbach with the bases still loaded. The righty swings and fouls off the first pitch. It rolls into the on-deck circle. And Thomas Jeffries will toss it back over to the Colonel dugout. Balladu last pitched at home against New Orleans, and that was his one and only loss this season. Close games, it's been the story of the season. UNO picked up a 3-2 win in the first game of that series against Nichols. And now Balladu back inside with a fastball. It's fouled off by Marbach, 0-2. This is how you earn credibility with your coaches. You come in in a close game, you replace a pitcher who just issued a four-pitch go-ahead walk, and all Balladu has done is get ahead 0-2 against the number five and six hitters for a team that came into this weekend batting 329. Bases loaded, two outs in the 0-2 pitch. Knocked foul behind home plate, and it clears the press box. Count remains 0-2. Who knew that we would be sitting back in the 10th inning, and Nichols would have just one hit following that first inning. Three for three to start the game for Nichols. Four to three is our score. Corpus is up. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Balladu. Fastball is outside for ball one. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Marbach has a couple hits today. Came up with an RBI single in the sixth inning. Anderson just walked to bring home the fourth run of the game. Bases are loaded, two outs, Colonels trail by a run. Here's the one-two pitch, outside, ball two. It has 
been a quiet night in that Corpus Christi dugout. Different story in the last two innings. They have come alive. Marbach being implored to come up with one more big hit. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Strike three. Marbach doesn't stand a chance. And that's back-to-back -back strikeouts by Bo. Inning ending strikeouts. Corpus takes the lead, but with bases loaded and one out of the number five and six hitters standing in, could have finished a whole lot worse. Tenth inning closes for Corpus with one run on one hit. Sacrifice bunts, walks, and hit by pitches. That was the story in the tenth for Corpus. One run, one hit, three left aboard, no errors. We're off to the bottom of the tenth. Corpus leads it four to three on ESPN Radio New Orleans. Cody Lecompte will try to follow Colin Kramer's lead and pick up a win while saving and securing the win for himself. Bottom of the 10th, it's four to three Corpus. Colin Kramer picked up the win for the Colonels last night, but he had to slam the door in, in the ninth inning. He came on to ensure that Nichols could take a 3-3 game and turn it into a 5-3 lead. They did, but Kramer also had to finish up shop in the ninth. This is what Lecompte will try to do a day later in the 10th. Lecompte will send a strike in against Chris Sandberg, and the Colonel 8 hitter falls behind 0-1. How good has Cody Lecompte been? Inning and two-thirds of relief, three strikeouts, five for five. He has yet to allow a Colonel to reach the base paths. The 0-1, it runs up and in, ball one. Corpus just retook the lead on a four-pitch bases-loaded walk. They're on top four to three, and Nichols is desperate for base runners. And they'll get one. Sandberg smacks one down the left field line. He'll turn hard around first base. It took Williams an eternity to pick the ball up in the left corner. And standing up at second base, a leadoff double for Chris Sandberg. It's the second hit since the first inning, and they've both been doubles. And now the tie and run is at second base for Nichols, and that allows Waylon LeBlanc to re-enter the batter's box as the winning run. And if you thought that maybe Seth Thibodeau would tap into his reserves and pinch hit, he is trusting his sophomore second baseman. This will be the eighth at bat for Waylon LeBlanc as a member of the Colonels. Nichols will pinch run. They'll get Champ Davison into second base. Chris Sandberg, no longer a part of this game, but he has done his job. A leadoff double in the 10th inning. Now Davison is at second. Lecomps pitch to LeBlanc. It's bunted foul. And now the count sits at 0-1. And this is why Waylon LeBlanc has not been pinch hit for. Capable skilled speedster hasn't made one mistake at second base this weekend but Nichols needs him to put that ball down and advance Davis into third base no balls one strike no outs and time called as Cody Lecomte was already finishing up his pitch didn't have time to adjust it and it doesn't matter how athletic Trevor Beard is he could not climb high enough to Catch that ball after it left the fingertips of Cody Lecomte. 
will reset the at bat. No balls, one strike, no outs. Davison on second, and LeCompte ready to go on the mound. The pitch to LeBlanc. It's bunted in the air, caught by LeCompte. He throws to second. It ends up in center field, but there's nowhere to go for Davison. He loses his helmet and now calls for time. It's been that kind of night for Cody LeCompte. Since he came in, good things have happened for the Islanders, and he gets Waylon LeBlanc to bunt it back to the mound. Now it's up to Ethan Valdez with one out and the tying run at second. Representing San Antonio, Texas, Ethan's got his grandma and dad hanging out in attendance. Mom's watching online. Chance to win it right here. And stepping off the rubber is Cody LeCompte. He'll buy himself some extra time before this at bat begins against Ethan Valdez. A single and a run in the first, a big walk in the eighth inning. Now Ethan Valdez can bring home Champ Davison and tie this game up. Cody LeCompte's pitch. It's down and in for ball one. Dane Simon is on deck. Outside of one notable mishap in center field, Dane Simon has been the most aggressive and angry hitter for the Colonels tonight. He has had a great game at the plate. And with Simon on deck, you have to like the Colonels' odds at prevailing here in the 10th at the very least, tying things up. Marty Smith didn't like the look of that pitch. He's gonna call time. Pitching coach for Corpus Christi strolls out to the mound and Ethan Valdez will earn a few more seconds to stand solo, isolate himself from the batter's box. He'll bring in Dane Simon. And Dane and Ethan Valdez, quick word between the number one and two hitters for the Colonels as they prepare for Cody LeCompte. Shows you the type of confidence that Cody has earned in the ninth and 10th inning. Scott Malone will let it ride with his left-handed reliever. With the Islanders leading it four to three in the 10th inning, Champ Davison is at second base. Ethan Valdez is in the batter's box, and we are ready to resume play. LeCompte's 1-0 pitch. It's taken inside for ball two. What is going through Ethan Valdez's mind at this stage in the game? You've got a left-handed reliever that has been hit hard by righties. The comp's been good tonight, but on the year, righties are batting 400 off of him. Davison establishing a lead at second base. And the 2-0 pitch hit hard towards left field. Going back is Williams. He'll reach up at the track and come up with the catch. Davison. Has to retreat to second base, and there's two outs in the 10th inning. Ethan Valdez hit that ball hard. A big charge in the swing. Ball that carried deep, but Williams was playing back. Williams, Anderson, and Jeffries have been playing in a lot against the Colonels. Doesn't matter if it's been Dylan Bell, Alec Paz, Adam Tarver. They've been willing to shade in and play the angles, but they were back for Valdez, and it works out. Two away in the 10th, and the first pitch to Simon is popped up into shallow center field. Anderson approaches, and he ends the game. Orpus Christie celebrating a successful comeback. They were down 2-0 after the first inning. They trailed 2-0 heading into the fourth. They score three runs, they take the lead, they lose it in the bottom of the sixth. The Colonels had a chance in the eighth and ninth to retake the lead or to walk it off, but a resilient game for Corpus Christi. They retake the lead in the top of the 10th on a four pitch bases loaded walk and they hold off the Colonels in the bottom of the 10th. Chris Sandberg, a leadoff double but Waylon LeBlanc, he bunted the ball back to the mound. LeCompte caught it. And then he gets Valdez to fly out to left and Dane Simon to pop up into center field. That is a big win for Corpus Christi and Cody LeCompte. 
Senior picks up the victory and hands Corpus Christi their 16th win of the year. They're 16 and 10 and now five and three in the Southland. Nichols, they slipped to 12 and 12 on the year and four and four in conference play. We've got our rubber match. We've got a, a Sunday series finale on the line. It'll be a 2 p.m. first pitch. Can't wait to have you for a warm 80 degree afternoon in Thibodeau tomorrow. Looks like a brilliant blue sky is awaiting us for more baseball on ESPN Radio New Orleans, and we will see you for the series finale between Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Nichols State University, 2 p.m. first pitch tomorrow. My name is Bryant Johnson. Joey D has been at the ESPN NOLA studio 